from the Raymond J. Bork Arena on the campus of Endicott College, Beverly, Massachusetts. Welcome to the 2023 NCAA Division III Men's Ice Hockey Championship. I'm Steve Eccioni along with Rob Kennedy. The great matchup today between Adrian College looking for back-to-back -back championships against Hobart looking for its first national championship. How did we get here, Rob? An amazing semifinal opener with the University of New England, an 8-7 overtime win for Adrian, and then Hobart beat the host school, Endicott, 3-1. to one. What a matchup we have. Well, both teams kind of doing what they do well in those semifinal games. You have Adrian, a very high-scoring team. You have Hobart. They don't concede a lot of goals. Something will have to give in this contest here tonight. All right, so the goalkeepers, the outstanding Damon Beaver for Hobart, number one in a lot of categories. Nick Tallarico getting the start for Adrian. He was pulled from the game the other day, but it wasn't necessarily because he wasn't playing well. Coach Adam Krug was looking to change things up a little bit. He gets the start. So Hobart is in the home white. Uh, they were two in both uh, the USCHO poll and pairwise. Adrian, number three in both. Therefore, Hobart, the, the host school, as we have a stoppage with the puck going out. Talk about David Beaver for a little bit. He was the NAHC Rookie of the Year and has played in all of the postseason games, allowing just three goals in that stretch, 25 saves on 26 shots. Again, Endicott, three shutouts in a row over the course of the season. He's the first Hobart goalie ever to do that. And in one year, he's already tied for third on Hobart's career shutout list with seven in the course of the season. All right, taking that last face off for Adrian was uh, Alessio uh, Luciani, who had the game winner in the overtime, uh, the classic game with the University of New England, as we have play in the Adrian zone. But Luciani, the hero in that victory. He was tremendous in that game. Luciani was. All right, Adrian in the attacking zone. They are... Among the best in the country, scoring goals per game. Neck and neck with Utica, 5.7 goals per game. Meanwhile, Hobart has the number one scoring defense. You've got a great offense against a great defense. Not that the teams don't uh, do well, uh, Adrian, with uh, stopping the puck and, and uh, Hobart in scoring, but it really stands out the matchup. Great offense versus great defense. We talk about these coaches, whether that's Adam Krug for Adrian, whether it's Mark Taylor for Hobart. They're fairly confident that their team can adapt to whatever style they're up against. And that's been the case. You don't get this far without being able to have a couple of tricks up your sleeve. You can't be one-dimensional to play in a national championship game, and neither of these teams are. The great Mark Taylor, the head coach of the Statesman, looking for his first national championship, the winner of the Eddie Jeremiah Award. Uh, as National Coach of the Year. Now Hobart in the attacking zone. We're early in the game. They work it in front in the slot and stopped by Tallarico on the shot in front by Fessig. Tallarico's a senior from Surrey, British Columbia. Played very well against Stevens Point in the quarterfinal win, and we'll take a look at the save he's making right here. He has allowed more than two goals in eight of the last ten. One of those two was against UNE, he was yanked after 30 minutes, allowed five goals and 15 shots, but really wasn't a situation where he played badly, just a situation where his head coach wanted to shake things up a bit. Adam Krug pulled him out of the game and brought a replacement in into Sean Stewart, and Stewart played very well to backstop the team down the stretch for that victory in the semifinals. All right, Hobart looking to advance, Adrian back defensively. We're just about two minutes into the game, no score. The last time Adrian played a game, it looked uh, like uh, we were going to have a, a goal every other minute or so. It was unbelievable. Now it's May for Adrian taking the shot, and that's blocked. And again, uh, Hobart with a tremendous uh, defense. Now play at the neutral zone. Working up ice Howell for Hobart. He scored the first goal, tying the game. In the victory over Endicott. Now up ice. Hobart shot. Saved Al Rico on a big play. Stopping Fontana. Yeah, great play too to set that up from Howell as well. He's such a workhorse. Very good blue collar player. Does a lot of the small things right. Glad to see he got rewarded with that big goal in the semifinal win over Endicott. All right, Fontana pushes it towards the goal. And uh, again, Tal Rico uh, making the play. Take a look at Hobart's opportunity here. 
There's the pass from Howell, Fontana, number 29, the freshman from BC, British Columbia coming in, forcing a very nice save right off the bat from Nick Tallarico, the senior. All right, on the faceoff. In the Adrian zone, it'll be Fasig taking the faceoff for the Statesman. He was their best faceoff man against Endicott, 10 out of 15. Comes out to the half wall, sent behind the goal. That was flipped down by... Mauer, who had the game-winning goal on the power play in the third period. He took a, a nice shot from the left side on the other end of the ice to convert on that power play goal. Now keeping it in, shot towards Tower Rico, steered away. Good uh, play uh, with Hartman on the turnover. Now Adrian pushing it forward with Murphy, who had a goal in the victory over UNE. One-timer is blocked. And uh, getting in front was Hartman, but Murphy stayed with it. Taken away, though, Daniels. As da Daniels will uh, leave it. That's what we're going to say a lot, I think, down in that zone, blocked. Because Hobart does that quite a bit. Very effective at snuffing out scoring chances from their opponents by just getting in front of shots so their goaltender doesn't have to deal with it. Adrian beat Geneseo last year in the championship game against... Uh, in the uh, championship victory over Geneseo as a play in the Adrian zone. It was a 5-2 when they had 25 blocks, Adrian, in that game. Yeah, I think Adrian can do that as well. Both teams will snuff out your chances. As the defenseman, not just the goaltenders. Both goaltenders very good, but that D really takes a lot of pressure off them. Jonah Alexander, open ice, goes behind the goal, now takes a, a check. Hobart's done a pretty good job in the uh, attacking zone so far. And uh, Adrian's not been able to get his high-powered offense going to this point. you got a great offense against a great defense, and it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. But right now, Hobart looks like uh, they're uh, playing in open ice right now. They've come up pushing the issue. They've got the first three shots in this game, leading 3 nothing almost uh, five minutes in. All right, that's Heinz Ford checking for Adrian. Here's Luciani. Oh, he's got to watch him. He's very uh, shifty and uh, fast and... Uh, does a lot of things for Adam Krug. Now Adrian flipping it down into the neutral zone. Spodniak after it, the outstanding Matus Spodniak, who has 29 goals, 28 assists. He has struggled, though, in uh, the games last year at Lake Placid and the other day. He only has one assist in three games. Teams are definitely focusing on him. Well, that's the thing. Kevin Swallow's UNE team really keyed on him, was trying to deny him touches. The idea seemed to be let someone besides Spodniak beat us. Well, somebody did with uh, Luciani's goal, but it was an effective game plan overall, but Spodniak, he's set for a breakout game, and that might be tonight. All right, that's a good check by Klein on Crane of Hobart, and Spodniak comes away up to Potosha, who had two goals the other day, shooting, saved by Beaver. And a big play, Beaver stopping uh, Potosha, who looked very good the other day and had key goals. Take a look at what happened here. Well, Potosha comes up big in big games. You mentioned those two goals in the semifinal win over UNE. Had a couple assists in the conference title game against Aurora. Goal in the final last year against Geneseo as well. He's a big game player and just a sophomore as well. Now you saw Beaver stop the Potosha shot on the short side. He gave up a short side goal. The only goal he allowed to, and to, or rather to UNE. And... Uh, Coach Krug was making the point to me this morning that he's a right-handed goalie, which is kind of unusual. Yeah, you don't see that all that much, and sometimes players have to adjust to it. Now, Hobart able to clear, play at the neutral zone. I'll finish that thought, too, because the attack was coming. But, you know, usually when you're coming down, bearing on a goaltender, you're used to seeing the glove and the stick in opposite hands, and sometimes that can determine where you're going to try to shoot the puck, and I think it will today. Well, they've definitely taken notice of that. They've taken notice of that in their pre-scout routine. Now May will flip it to the right of Beaver. Coming up for it went, but now Hobart with the counter. And they will work up ice with Buzavera. He sends it behind the goal. Buzavera goes after it in the corner. Now it's set to the middle shot, blocked in front. That was a excellent effort by Tyson in the slot. But now behind the goal, Buzavera. Buzavera working along the half wall. Sends it to the corner. This is the Adrian zone. Tal Rico's had to make a couple saves early for Adrian. We're in a national championship game here in Beverly, Massachusetts. So much on the line here. Adrian looking to defend its national championship. Hobart looking for its first. The last time a team 
won back-to-back titles with St. Norbert in 2011 and 12. Only three teams have done it going into this uh, game today. St. Norbert has done it, Middlebury has done it, and Stevens Point as well, those last two back in the 1990s. All <laughs> right, trying to get around uh, the defender was uh, Bradley Summers, and getting in front of him was Wooth. Yeah, Wooth came in really fired up going after Summers, and Summers must have heard him because he dodged that at the last moment. There's a big bang over by the Hobart bench. That was Wooth crashing, just missed that check, got a glancing blow on Summers, but it does show you the physicality. That's going to be an objective for both these teams today, but more Hobart, I think. They really brought that against Endicott, a very physical contest in the semis. Summers had a tremendous game against UNE with the, the pass to set up the tying goal uh, late in the game. He also had a goal in the game. And he's a first year. A lot so, of young players in these rosters. All right, Hobart up ice. Luca Cuero, backhand. Did it go in? It did. The net came out. The light went on. That's a score. Luca Cuero, one nothing. His 21st goal of the year. Hobart jumping on Adrian. Aquero is just on fire. They might take a look at this to see when the net went off. But Aquero, eight goals in the last eight games. And he's the first Hobart 20 goal man since 2009. That's 21 on the season. Neither of these teams are too daunted by giving up the first goal, but it's huge to score it. And Aquero bearing down. Let's see if someone touched that beforehand, but it looked like Aquero got that. They haven't poked into the side, too. Let's see it again. This is Aquero now, number 12 on the backhand. There's the shot. And let's see. I, the only reason why I asked the question was because of the net coming out. Right. I mean, it, and they'll look at it for sure. It's a chicken egg thing. <laughs> Which came first? And uh, they're gonna, they're, they're definitely gonna look at that. I'll take that. I mean, I, I, that's hard. That was hard to tell. The light did come on, but I, the, did the, I guess I'm gonna ask the question: Did the goal go over the the puck go over the line before the net came out? Let's check it out again. We'll watch when this happens. Puck into the crease. There's the bump. There's the net off its mooring, and from our angle, you really can't tell where the puck was. They celebrated. You see the celebration. Jo that's Jonah Alexander with Aquero. And Alexander is out there as well. Shane Shell might have been the man on that far side, too, who was trying to dig for it. We'll find out here as the referees take a look. Matt Fuller, Matt Terreri, the referees. Uh, Dan Bereka, Cam Gobert, the linesman. So this is an opportunity to talk about the referees and replays, uh, obviously the Adrian victory over the University of New England. Uh, there was a, a controversy, let's say, in the uh, overtime as to whether the five-minute spearing should have been called. Now, let's see if we have a ruling here. But uh, we're, that is a, uh, that's a that's a score. It's a goal. That's a score. Well, One the question is going to be if Aquero got the last touch on that, if it got through. Talarico, the goaltender, and he was the one to repel it, or if it was touched over there on that right wing side. Would have been Shane Shell, I think, if it was batted across the line and Aquero doesn't get it. We'll get the official announcement coming up here in a moment. The important thing, Hobart with a 1 nothing lead. I'll make the point that Adrian, uh, after a replay review, got a major call and uh, they converted in uh, the overtime, and the uh, replays obviously are going to be a major factor uh, potentially in this game. And uh, Right now, the goal awarded for Aquero. And Hobart Shell. leading, rather, Shell after the Aquero shot. So it is Shell. Yeah, he just got that last touch, it looks like. That's what it's saying on our live stats update here. Let's see if they announce it as Shane Shell. But for now, it's Shell. Okay. And if it is Shell, who had that great pass on the go ahead goal against uh, Endicott with the Mauer goal, Shell made the pass to make it 2 to 1 for Shell. That would be his fourth goal of the year. But right now, a big save by Tauarico on the strike by Tyson. T uh, now Adrian countering, trailing one nothing. Adrian with Spodniak, Spodniak in the corner, double teamed. You can see him being marked there. Now Adrian back, cross ice, it goes. Loose at the neutral zone. Redding takes a shove from Aquero. Hobart four checking. Adrian comes away with it. Spodniak in the middle. Poked back on a good defensive play by Wooth. And now the Statesman advancing. This is Cooper Swift. 
sending it towards Tauriko, who has had to be very alert in this game. They've been peppering him with shots. Cooper Swift has done very well in this uh, semifinal and final. I got to see him play a little juniors up in Maine for the Maine Nordiques. Very good player up there in the NAHL. And even more impressive to me, not just his skill on the ice, but he's the Elite 90 Award winner, the highest GPA among all the semifinal players. And a couple assists against Endicott of the semis, who's been doing it on and off the ice for this Hobart team. All right, face off in the Adrian zone. Goes behind the goal. Adrian defensively with possession. Hobart flying early in this game here. They're doing some nice forechecking. And uh, they're bottling up Adrian to some extent. This is what UNE did uh, quite a bit. And uh, UNE had some good counterattacks as well. Uh, after bottling up Adrian's attackers early in the game to take a 5-2 lead, only to see Adrian come back in the game. Yeah, the bottle was uh, had the lid on it for a while, but all of a sudden it was like someone shook it up, and that bottle burst off like a champagne cork. Very streaky game, that Adrian-New England game, with uh, a back-and-forth uh, shift of momentum throughout the game. I it's hard to describe that game in any words. All right, a breakaway potentially shot. Tauriko in front with the saves. Again, loose in front. Oh. It is crazy in that crease right now. And Tauriko was able to get in front on that shot up ice. Uh, and Hobart almost scored again. Oh, well, it's Will Crane again. And talk about the depth these two teams have. Will Crane's number 10. You watch him right in the front of the goal. Here's the original opportunity. That's Fassig. Yeah, Fassig with the shot. There's Crane right there. One jam. And just holding that goal line, Tallarico, both these teams have tremendous depth. That line with Howell and Crane, Fontana, they generate some chances, and they have developed here and uh, earned a power play here. The first power play of the game does go to the Statesman. So Hobart's power play this year, 21.8%. Adrian's penalty kill, 84%. Hobart. Struggled on its power play against Endicott, but they converted the fifth time they had a chance to go ahead in the game in the third period. And Coach Taylor was telling me that they talked about it as a group. They were upset that they were not able to convert early uh, in their power play opportunities, but it was a power play goal which put them ahead for good. Yeah, three for the last 24 with that big one, of course, in the UNE game. Just one for six in that game, but when the one came, when it came to put them on top 2-1, you kind of forget about those other five. It was on their fifth try. That was that great play by uh, Shell setting up Maurer, who took a big shot, beating Ryan Wilson. Now the Hobart, Hobart power play in effect. And uh, having it knocked down was Aquero. Goes after it in the corner, working with Alexander. And Adrian able to flip it out. There was 110 left on the power play, first Whoa. of the game. Watch out for Adrian, a shorthanded as well. They do have eight shorthanded goals this season, and Luciani has three of those. Riley Murphy doing some good work to send it up ice back. For the Statesman, you have Hartman, and now Hartman gets the return pass, works it up the left wing. He will send it behind into the corner after it is Maurer. Now poking at it, Brendan Howell. So uh, they fight for the puck in the corner. There's 35 seconds left on the power play. Now they stop play. Penalty coming up here, I think, too, as the referee has his arm up behind the play. It's a high sticking call being assessed, and that'll cancel out that Hobart power play. So, Zach Tyson, the captain, I think is the guilty man. And yet 16, who's having the door open, he's heading to the box. And four on four for 34 seconds. Then it's Adrian with the power play. 8.59 left first period. And that Adrian power play, boy, oh, boy, has it been good. 43.4% on the season, but four on four for the next 34 seconds, then we'll get to see it. All right, Patosha on the faceoff for Adrian. So right now we're four on four, and Hobart with this uh, ice opened up a little bit. They'll push it forward with Wooth, but right now there's only 25 seconds left on the Adrian penalty. Soon they're going to have that great power play in effect. Here's Heinz at the neutral zone. He will leave it. Take it away. Break away. Score, Aquero. Of course it is. On the four on four. Two nothing Hobart. This time he will get credit for the goal. No doubt about it. This time now nine goals in the last nine games for the NEHC player of the year. And he shows up in these big games. Another huge goal. And it's a two goal advantage for the Statesman. 
And just a play at center ice with a loose puck. Back pass went off the skate of the defenseman. That's the wrong guy to give it to. Luca Cuero down low. Tallarico really no chance to save that one. Perfect shot. And wasn't much room there. Glove side low either. So Luca Cuero, who was the player of the year in the NEHC, has just had a great first period. His backhand led to the first goal. And he converts on the four-on-four. Right now it's the Adrian power play. So they can come right back with this great power play that uh, converts at a 43.4% rate. Spodniak shot blocked in front. Shields has it now on the far side. A lot of assists this year for Shields. Shields gets it back. Sends it along the half wall. 2-0 Hobart. Shields sends it to the slot. Out it goes. Spodniak right side. Here comes Went. Or ends rather. Blocked. Now Spodniak sends it back for Shields. Backhands it off the half wall. Knocked out by Hobart. Talks a lot about the power play for Adrian. Hobart's penalty kill, though, has been great. Luciani in front. Cross ice pass. Loose in front. Score, Adrian. They come right back on that amazing power play they have to make it 2-1 Hobart, and this is taking on the look of the UNE game right now. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of goals in this contest. Three already. So we'll see what happened in front there. The replay, Enns took the shot, Luciani was in front batting at it. It's the question of who got that last touch, and we'll be able to tell until we see this replay. Here's Luciani right there. The pass in front, you see Enns 49 showing up at the end, and I think he was the last one to get it. I think it'll be Enns' goal. And Tyler, uh, Ty Enns has just done an amazing job on power plays. He leads the country. In power play goals with 15 now. He had a power play goal the other day. And uh, that not traditional power play for him. He has a big shot, but that time in front, he scores. He's got points in all but four games this season. Now a 13-game point streak. Ten goals in those 13 games. And he matches season high against UNE with a couple goals and a couple assists. 21 now on the season for Ty Enns, the Manitoba native. So after the Aquero goal... Adrian able to come right back with a power play goal. And, again, they were down 5-2 to two to UNE yeah. before coming back to take a 6-5 uh, lead, only to see the lead dissipate. They were down 7-6. They tied it late with the extra skater, won in overtime. So they showed tons of resiliency in that game. And so they were not going to let that 2 nothing lead deter them uh, here in this first period. No, I knew that as well because you look at their numbers. They are 12 2 and 1 in the season when they concede the first goal. So that's a team that doesn't get rattled very often. Now, of course, the other end, Hobart 20 and 1 when scoring first. But even against Hobart, I don't think going down a goal, two goals, is really going to rattle this Bulldogs team all that much. And the power play brought them right back. So Hobart gives up 1.2 goals a game. The most goals they've allowed in a game this year was seven. That was against Elmira. They've lost twice this year. They're 28-2. Adrian, meanwhile, they have a record of 25-4-2. But what's interesting about the Elmira game, Beaver was pulled in that game. He gave up five goals. But the game before that, he had shut out Elmira. Yeah, so that, that was an outlier. Uh, but they don't give up that many goals. Purple and gold apparently saved it all for the second night, all those offensive uh, opportunities and lamplighters. And uh, the only other loss this year was to Norwich for Adrian, and that was a, a more traditional score where they lost 2-1, to one, traditional for the way they play. Those are two powerhouse teams right there as far as the legacies in Division Three college hockey goes. So we talking about a who's who of teams. And you go 28-2, and two, and those are your two losses. You've had yourself quite a season. So the Aquero goal came at 11-23, and uh, the... Adrian goal came shortly thereafter, waiting for the official time. But uh, two goals in pretty quick fashion. I've got that one as 12-19, so if that's the case, it'll be 56 seconds in between the two. So an immediate response by Adrian. Now it's the Hobart zone, and Beaver allows a goal. His goals against average is 1.00. That was all he allowed against Endicott. Now in the attacking zone, Hobart. They got the first two goals of the game, but now Adrian, they score, and now they bring that great offense up ice. A shot, Beaver, save on the short side. And good rush up ice by the Bulldogs. 
trailing by one. Yeah, Beaver showing a little bit of the five hole there, just kind of daring the Adrian player to take the shot. Trying to beat him five hole, and quickly as he opened up those legs, he slammed him shut. His rebound control is outstanding. I noticed that about Beaver, too. He doesn't allow much as far as big rebounds, and he held on to that, too. All right, Aquero won that last faceoff, but Adrian takes it away, and they send it towards the side. Luciani sends it to the middle. Spodniak blocked, and now back to the neutral zone. And icing. Yeah, they had to ice that, too. This is more like it from Adrian. This is more what they want to do is to establish control in the offensive zone with all those high-powered weapons they have. They'd love to get Spodniak some open looks. A senior from Slovakia, NCHA Player of the Year, won the Sid Watson Award, but teams key on him. They focus on him. But if he gets opportunities, he can bury them, and don't you think the statesmen certainly know that? All right, Luciani forward-checking along with Redding, but it comes back to the neutral zone. Shields, third in the country in assists per game. Sends it to Spencer. He winds it around. Talking about Shields, he has uh, 29 assists this year. So now Adrian with some good forward checking. Back is Shields, but he lost control of the puck. He has to go back and get it along with his teammate Spencer. Hobart forward checking. They lead 2-1 to one here. They scored the first two goals, Adrian with a power play goal. Now Murphy in the corner. Murphy having a solid season. A lot of depth on Adrian. Now working up is Hartman. Hartman along the wing. Back it goes behind Tauerico. For checking Hobart. Play at the neutral zone. Went works up the right wing. Went pushes after it behind the goal. Went, leaves it, taken away, but now taken back by Adrian. Good forward checking. Here comes Went, sends it in front, goes to the corner. Murphy has it at the half wall, sends it towards Beaver, wide. Coming up, Adinier pinching, goes behind the goal. Bradley Summers with the forward check. Going down in a heap is Terry Ryder, and here comes Hobart. They work it to the middle, shot saved, Tallarico. Good rush up ice by the Statesman after uh, Ryder at the blue line went down hard. Tanner Hartman did very well there. You watch him, he's 82 right here. He'll get the receipt, he'll receive this pass, accepting it right at the blue line. Nifty little drop, and that shot taken by Cooper Swift. Hartman just a freshman, all rookie team in the conference on a rare three game streak without a point, which is not typical for him. And again, he plays on a fourth line for this team, which again shows you the depth that the Statesmen have. 2-1 to one Hobart, 4.20 to go. First period, national championship. Here's Potosha, fans on it. And back checking was Tyson to get it out to the neutral zone, but it's pushed up ice. Calgin after for Adrian. Hobart countering. They worked their way nicely. And they have an offside, however. That was uh, Maurer with the rush. One too many moves at the blue line. I think just tried to make a little... Move going across that stripe, and that drew one of his teammates offside. Maurer had the game-winning goal against Endicott in the semi. And that happened as a uh, result of him and a couple of his teammates saying to Coach Taylor, look, get the second power play unit out there. They suggested the adjustment, and it worked. They scored that power play goal. Kind of like seeing that from the leadership of the players down there, and, of course, for the coach kind of saying, you know, that sounds like a good idea, and taking the feedback and listening to his players. Not all coaches do that. All right, Artem Buzavera on the faceoff for Hobart outside the blue line against Patosha, uh, who had two goals the other day, big goals. Now Hobart. Bulger sent it down, intercepted Adrian. Now Patosha up the wing, backhands it to the side, and it went out. 3.50 left first period. I'm Steve Vecchioni with Rob Kennedy. This is the national championship game 2023 NCAA Division III Men's Ice Hockey Championship at the Raymond J. Bork Arena. It's been a very intimate atmosphere here. Intimate atmosphere and good crowds, too, and I'm very impressed. And not overly surprised, but still impressed. You're talking about Hobart near Geneva, New York. What a seven, eight-hour ride. And then Adrian, of course, in Michigan. Long way for fans to travel, but they have just about filled this place. All right, Tyson for Hobart. Sends it up the right side. Going after it is Daniels. Adrian with the takeaway, and it goes behind the goal. On the near side, Spencer. Spencer works it out. 
Now up the right wing. Here come the Bulldogs. Swade sends it behind to the end boards. After it is Heinz. Comes out to the blue line. Kept in at the half wall briefly, but Hobart is able to push it forward. And they've been doing a good job countering Hobart in this game thus far, similar to UNE. Now sent to the neutral zone. Centered in front. Alexander one-timer. Knocked to the corner. Alexander sends it behind the goal. Aquero lurking in front. This is Swift at the half wall. That was that counter you were talking about, too, right there, right on cue. Funny how that can work sometimes. Now sent behind the goal. And covered up by Tal Rico. Now we have a player go down late. Yeah. That was Aquero. And, uh, Courtesy of Jaden Shields, as you see right there, number 20 skating away. Now Shields... Known for his offense, known for setting up goals. He's a great two-way defenseman. He can bring a little physical edge, too, and Aquero finding that out firsthand. Face-off will be in the Adrian zone. Shields right. a former Austin Bruin. Now he's wearing the black and gold, similar to the Boston Bruins. What I kind of saw from this Adrian team, they really kind of look like the team that plays not far from here at the TD Garden. Face-offs in the game right now, even 9-9. Adrian comes up ice. Backhand wide, Spodniak loose with Redding. He'll send it behind the goal. And they would love to get Spodniak going. Again, he has not scored either last year in Lake Placid a goal or the other day, and he is a great goal scorer. Meanwhile, countering Hobart, Belov is able to push it up along the wall. On the far side, Hartman now goes to the near side. Adrian looks to clear with 2.15 to go first period. I want to point out that Terry Ryder has been a great play over there on that uh, left wing side. He's a big physical defenseman who doesn't get a lot of recognition sometimes because his offensive numbers don't jump out, but he's a tremendous stay-at-home defenseman and plays with an edge. All right, Adrian looking to create offense in the attacking zone, but Hobart able to clear at the neutral zone. They push it forward. Murphy tries to collect for Adrian, goes back, and... The Bulldogs will send it back up ice. It's 2-1 Hobart. They scored the first two goals of the game. And then Adrian scoring on a power play to make it 2-1 here at Endicott College. Shot on towards Tauriko wide. And again, they continue to pepper Tauriko. Murphy in the attacking zone. Lost control of the puck. Uh -oh. He's going to have a breakaway. Here comes Murphy. Takes the backhand. No goal. What a save by Beaver. I'm going to wait and see if he caught that or knocked that up and out of play, but what a tremendous save from Beaver. I mean, so off the turnover, a wide open point blank breakaway, and Beaver comes up huge. Take a, a look. The guy Riley Murphy, too. It's not some scrub who's going to kind of break down. Yeah, Beaver. Just got a little touch on that. He didn't get much, but he got enough to make sure that deflected off the back glass and didn't give the Adrian goal scorer a chance to tie things up. Beaver with the number one goals against average in the country, the number one save percentage, 956 is save percentage. Murphy's got 17 goals on the season, including one in the semis against UNE. So he denied a guy who's been having a hot stick. That was Patterson who had a direct look at Tal Rico, and that time Tal Rico made a big save. I think these teams have settled it a little bit. You know, the game didn't take long to get going. Three goals here in the first period, and now the goaltenders have settled in a bit. And but might start seeing goals be a little harder to come by, although in a game like this, you never know. All right, Buzavera on the faceoff for Hobart. Goes behind Tal Rico. Swade was the face-off taker for the uh, Bulldogs. He was their best face-off man against UNE. Won 12 out of 16, 75%, not too shabby. Beaver has eight saves right now. And for Adrian, Tauriko nine. So both goalies have been uh, pressured in the game thus far. Now back for Hobart. You've got Wooth. He'll send it off the wall. Taken back at the neutral zone ends. We have 20 seconds remaining in the period. Here comes Alexander for Hobart. Lost the puck. Adrian has time to get it up ice. Ends with 10 seconds remaining. Sent behind Beaver. Five seconds. And that's going to do it for the first period. 
States would take no chance of the one goal lead. The puck far away from their offensive zone. Just kill the clock. So we saw the talent of Luca Cuero in that first period. His backhand uh, was stopped in front, but uh, with the net coming out, it was Shell scoring the first goal, and then Aquero scoring the second goal on a four-on-four scenario. Adrian coming back with a power play goal, and the score at the end of one, Hobart two, Adrian one. Your quick thoughts about the first period. Well, the power play goal wasn't much of a surprise who got it. Tie ends, but it was exactly what the doctor ordered for Adrian too, and that's not surprising that their special teams come to the rescue when they need it the most. 2-1, we've got ourselves a heck of a game here in Beverly, Mass. And again, we saw the great talent of uh, Beaver uh, stopping that breakaway by Murphy. We got a lot of hockey left. This is the National Championship game, 2023 NCAA Division Three Men's Ice Hockey Championship. I'm Steve Vecchioni with Rob Kennedy. We're back from Beverly shortly for the second period. And welcome back to the 2023 NCAA Division III Men's Ice Hockey Championship. The championship game between Hobart and Adrian. I'm Steve Vecchioni with Rob Kennedy. Hobart leads Adrian 2-1. to one, And Hobart, Rob, got off to a good start in the game early. They did. They were out shooting Adrian early on, and they got the first opportunity. And the first goal as well, as we'll see it right here. Luca Queros, number 10, breaking in on goal. He's the backhand across the crease. Shane Shell there to poke it home. We thought Aquero got this first, but Shell got it. They are going to have to review this goal, as you see, but it went in before the net went off its moorings. And here, Aquero didn't get the last one. He'll get this, though, a bad giveaway. And those blue line turnovers, they'll kill you. Aquero scores here, 2 0 Hobart. And you watch him come in, didn't have much room down low on Tallarico, but beat him low glove side. That's not going to stop these Bulldogs, though, as they have the offensive firepower to come back. And they do right here. Tyler ends, finishing off Matthew Redding's shot. Ends right there on the doorstep, poking it home. It's 2-1. And Adrian, who were outshot early, really blasted back in that period, outshooting the Statesman 18-10, but they're on the wrong side of a 2-1 scoreline. Later in the period, Beaver made a tremendous save on a breakaway by Murphy, yeah. and for ends, that's his 15th power play goal of the year. He leads the country. He, he's amazing on the power plays. Adrian was down 2 nothing. They were down 5-2 the other day. Uh, resilient, of course, and uh, not panicking, and that was the same thing for Mark Taylor of Hobart the other day. They fell behind one nothing, similar to the Curry game, which uh, got them uh, to this game. They were down one nothing in the second period, but then they went on a tear scoring three goals in 35 seconds to win 5-1 over Curry. My point being, both coaches have preached, don't panic. Yeah. Stay, keep an even keel. We can come back. It's really hard to do that as well. I don't have that kind of experience uh, playing, but I talked to Ben Lovejoy once, uh, former Dartmouth Big Green player, Pittsburgh Penguin, won the Cup with Pittsburgh, and I asked him, what's it like in an elimination game? What's the pressure like? And he says, I can't even explain it to you. You just have to feel it. But when you look up at the scoreboard and you're down a goal or two, the clock just flies on you, and it just feels like summer's rushing at you like an oncoming freight train, he said. To keep the emotions in check in a situation like that is so difficult to do, but both these teams did that, and it just kind of shows you the steely nerve and the resolve both these teams have. And it comes from the top. The coaches really preach that. They have those uh, that demeanor behind the bench, and the players feed off that, and they are able to play their game because they don't let their emotions run away with them, and they don't panic. And Mark Taylor made a big point of telling me that, that, that we kept our emotions in check when we fell behind Endicott one nothing. Mark Taylor's great. He has uh, some interesting uh, sayings. One of them is, say nothing when you lose and say less when you win. <laughs> he, <laughs> keeping, you know, he, he likes players who, who don't say much, stay on an even keel, and uh, he, he preaches that kind of thing, and it really reflects how they play. Kind of sounds like a Herb Brooksism, doesn't it? I mean, it, it does. no surprising <laughs> that he's closing in on 400 wins, Coach Mark Taylor, 377 entering today's game, and he is the winningest coach in Hobart history. Not Hobart hockey history, Hobart athletics history. No coach at Hobart's ever won 300 games in any sport. He's up to 377, the Eddie Jeremiah Award winner for National Coach of the Year. 
both coaches have a Coach of the Year award as well because Adam Krug got the 2023 National College Hockey Association Coach of the Year for the fifth time. So, again, that speaks to the point we're making of just the leadership behind these two respective benches. Adam Krug with 205 career wins, 44 losses, 13 ties, highest winning percentage of any active coach across all NCAA divisions. He's a former Adrian player where he was a player uh, of the year in the MCHA. Right. They are currently uh, in the NCHA, but he played for the Princeton, uh, current Princeton coach, Ron Fogarty. We talked about this the other day. They've won uh, 10 Harris Cups under Coach Krug, which is the cup for the, uh, the champion of their league. Uh, so a great honor there. He, he said to me, we had a taste of winning a championship last year. We won it again. And so Adam Krug and the Bulldogs, they were down 2 nothing, but they have rallied with a power play goal. They have an amazing power play. And uh, it, it's hard to know how this game's going to go with these two really good programs. I think the taste of championships are a bit like that old Lay's potato chips commercial. You can't just eat one, right? You get the taste for it, and you want more and more. And that's what Hobart wants to experience as well. Three times into the semifinals, Never won until Friday, looking to finish the job here as well as we get set for period number two. All right, the face-off. 12-12 face-offs in the first period. This time it's Adrian controlling. Now they are going from right to left. Ends goes down in a heap as we are underway here in this second period. This is the Hobart zone. And Ends will keep it in, sends it down low for Swade. Swade goes after it at the half wall, but Hobart able to push it forward into the Adrian zone. And no icing there. Spencer back, taken away, centered, but no one there for Hobart. Ends pushes it off the wall. And Aquero gets in front of it. Whistle stops play. The puck came out and popped back in. That's what they're talking about over there. Hobart questioning this. Luke Aquero doesn't like the offside call, but that'll give... Uh, the Bulldogs a chance to change things up and a face off at neutral ice just 36 seconds into this period. Tower Rico, the Adrian goalkeeper, had nine saves in the first period. Beaver had eight, including that great save on the breakaway by Murphy of Adrian. Riley Murphy was looking for his 18th goal of the year, but he, Beaver made a tremendous play in a breakaway late in the first period. Now Adrian looks to clear, and they work the neutral zone with Luciani. Sends it up the half wall. Knocked back by Hobart. That great Hobart defense. 1.2 goals per game only allowing. Luciani after it in the corner. Luciani is taken off the play by Wooth. Loose along the corner. Picked up by Aquero. He sends a cross slice. And here comes Hobart. They push it up the left side. There's Alexander at the half wall. Leaving it for Aquero. Those two work great together. Terry Ryder broke that up as well as it looked like it might have been an odd man rush developing, but Ryder, again, so reliable, so solid. You very rarely see him in the other team's uh, scoring highlights, that's for sure. Redding sends it to Spodniak. They would, as I said earlier, just love to get him going. He has not scored a goal either in Lake Placid last year in the semis and championship or in the game the other day, but he is so capable of getting hot. Hobart obviously focusing on him. That one-timer, Fandon, comes through the crease. Hobart pressure. That's Lastman sending it down. But goes behind the goal. Adrian working the near wall, and they work it into the neutral zone. Back is Lastman. Takes a bump. Meanwhile, Patosha shooting. And uh, it's stopped in front. Patosha goes after it. Out to the blue line. Adrian pressure. Here comes Klein. Sends it to the slot. Now poked away. Loose in the slot. Adrian pressure from the circle. Goes through. And now Hobart able to finally clear, but good pressure by Adrian. Yeah, it started from Connor May as well, number 18, who made a fine physical play in the offensive zone to knock a Hobart defenseman down and start that flurry for the Bulldogs. Two to one Hobart. We've played two and a half minutes of this second period. Back is Maurer for Hobart. Had the game winning goal in the 3 1 victory the other day on the power play. Now working up. The Statesman with Belov, who has four game-winning goals this year, 11 goals on the year. But Hobart able to collect it at the neutral zone. They send it wide of Tal Rico. They go after it with Hartman. Tanner Hartman has seven goals this year. And we have a stoppage as Tal Rico covers up. 
And Belov, you mentioned him, the freshman from Belarus, had a goal in the quarterfinals against Curry. A couple of multi-goal games this year, 11 goals coming into the season. Just a freshman, another guy I got to see playing juniors a little bit with the main Nordiques up there in Lewiston, along with his teammate Cooper Swift. At North American Hockey League, NAHL is putting a lot of quality guys into D1 and D3 college hockey. We saw that Maurer shot from the faceoff. Maurer has a big shot. He had that shot from the left wing to give Hobart the lead the other day. Here he is, takes the shot that goes behind Tauerico, but he looks good when he winds it up. You don't want to give him the opportunity, especially if it's unobstructed. Pressure Hobart after it is Tyson. Adrian is able to finally clear back Bolger. He sends it off the half wall. Big check applied against Adinie. Adinie bounces right up, and now Adrian is able to work it in front of their goal. A little dangerous there. They get, work it out all the way down. Back is Wooth. Pressure on the four check by Adrian, but now Swift has it. Sends it to the near side. Cross ice pass. Hobart leading 2-1 here in the second period. A lot on the line here in terms of history. Hobart going for its first ever championship. Adrian looking to repeat. Mark Taylor, the head coach of Hobart, with a great career and uh, seeking that first national title. Now Hobart at the neutral zone pushing it, but it's intercepted by Klein, and he sends it up along the wall, goes behind the goal. Heinz chasing for Adrian, comes to the near side, Swade, sends it to the middle, back to the blue line. That's Babiak, leaves it, Klein, that's blocked. And uh, getting in front of it, Aquero along the wall, and it's sent back down. Yeah, Aquero and Shane Shell both do a lot more than score goals on the offensive end of the ice. They can play some D as well back in their own half. Oh, big, big hit. All right, Hobart. Was working, Jake, it, working it out. Sorry about that. Jake Swade was the one who made that hit as well. This has been his custom here in the couple of games here in Beverly. Taurico will leave it for his defense. So uh, we've seen this, some pretty good forechecking for both teams in the second period. No scoring in the second period to this point. And here's Luciani behind the goal, whirling. Sends it out to the blue line. Shot taken, blocked. Spencer's shot was blocked on a terrific play by Will Crane, who yeah. dies in the neutral zone. Everybody out in the ice, it seems like to me, is just absolutely fearless. And again, these are the kind of players you want to get for a team that's going to make a deep tournament run. In that situation, Will Crane, the junior from Colorado, watch him again at number 10. He doesn't score a ton, four goals, five assists, but what he does is invaluable defensively. Just watch him charge this shot. He knows he's going to take a hit off the skate as it turned out. He knows he's going to get some contact someplace and leave a bruise, but out he comes giving up the body to deny a scoring chance to the Bulldogs. And at the very end of that, he went flying. Yep. Now, they don't feel any kind of pain until after the game. That, that, that's when it starts to hurt. All right, face-off outside the blue line. Adrian again, they're going right to left. Luciani on the face-off. And after it is Redding in the Hobart zone, Hobart able to push it up ice. And after it is Tyson, back is Adrian. Oops. Ryder had it blocked. Four checking now. Hobart in front of comes through the crease. Fasig couldn't get to that. Now Redding right wing for Adrian. He pushes it down. Spodniak side of the net. Save Beaver. And uh, that was a good short side save by Beaver. What a matchup. Spodniak Beaver. Don't think it'll be the last time those two teams, or two players, I should say, will go eye to eye. This pass from Redding. There's Spodniak bearing in. Looked like he was trying to bounce that off the defenseman in front, too, as Maurer was right there, almost banked it in off his skate. Spodniak with 29 goals, trying to get to number 30. No one's done that since Sean Skelly, who was the head coach now of the Adrian women's team. He scored 30 for the Bulldogs back in 2009. That was actually more Maurer than Beaver on that, getting back defensively. Yeah, he made a very good play, but, uh, again, it was an alertness on Spodniak who tried to use him as a bumper to try to direct that in. All right, Kaljan tries to work his way to the corner for checking Potosha for Adrian. This is the Hobart zone. May try to apply a big check, but Hobart able to work it out. In front, it comes another check applied. Penalty upcoming. So flying uh, to the ice after that check was Crane, and uh, Hobart's going to have a power play. Fourth line doing it again as well as that whole thing started with a freshman, Khalil Fontana, who dodged the check right in front of the Adrian bench. 
Set the puck down the ice to start the opportunity. The interference call will be coming right here. And here you see it knocked down in front. Uh, Hobart player, I think that was, well, it wasn't Fontaine. He couldn't get up back up that quickly. Maybe Matt Perryman who got in there. That was 19 who was joining the rush. So another power play to the Statesman. It's power play number three on the night. And a chance to regain that two-goal lead. So Shields is off. Hobart scored on a four-on-four -four scenario earlier. The second goal they had in the game, that was Aquero. And Adrian has the lone power play goal in the game. So this is the Hobart power play leading 2-1. to one. Went for Adrian. Has it in his own zone. Leaving it for May. May will send it down. Watch out, though, if you're Hobart. Yes, it's a power play, but this Adrian team is deadly shorthanded. Gave up 19 power play goals, scored shorthanded eight times on the year. That's uh, not a bad ratio. Maurer, who had that big power play goal against Endicott behind the goal, sends it to the half wall. Aquero, Aquero up to Swift, keeps it in. Now it comes to the near side. Hobart power play for another minute 15. They have it at the half wall, sent to the blue line. That is Swift. Here it comes, shot in front. Covered up by Taurico. The initial shot by Shell, and Alexander was stopped in front. Yeah, Swift to Shell, and then Alexander right there on the doorstep, and Taurico had to be very alert to find out where number 14 is out there in white, Jonah Alexander, the junior. Division One player at Alabama Huntsville, now playing for Hobart. couple of opportunities for him. One stop, two star from Taurico. He's a first-team all-NEHC guy, and he's got points in his last eight as well. Eight of, the, actually eight of his last 11, seven goals, seven assists, 14 points over that 11-game span. Tal Rico made a great save on Alexander. That was a point-blank look. There is one minute to go on this power play. Shot Aquero that goes wide. And now Spodniak after it, shorthanded, up the right wing. Here he comes. Spodniak sends it in front, and Luciani just missed getting to it. Good rush up ice. Hobart tries to counter on their power play. Back Spodniak again. He's all over the ice right now. He is. And I wonder, I haven't seen Adrian play all that much, obviously. Luciano's three shorthanded goals. I wonder how many of them were set up by Spodniak in situations just like that. Spodniak does not have a power play goal this year. They have eight. Luciani leads in short, a rather shorthanded goal. Ooh. Now shot wide by Lastman. Spodniak does not have a shorthanded goal. But they came close on that rush up ice. Now Adrian sending it on goal towards Beaver. There is 14 seconds left on the Hobart power play. Lastman sends it ahead. Lastman almost just scored, too. That was a great shot by Kevin Lastman, who, again, is one of the more reliable defensive players. Just one goal in the season. But you wouldn't know it from that opportunity. That was awfully close. All right, the Adrian bench celebrating the penalty kill. And they almost scored on that rush up ice by Spodniak. Now, again, it's Patterson behind the goal. Hobart in the attacking zone. No goal scoring in the second period. Here's Heinz sending it ahead. They're Swade, right wing. Swade takes the shot, and it is wide. Comes all the way out to the neutral zone. Went glove side that time. They're doing a lot of attacking stick side on right-handed goal. Turn that time they went glove. Here's Swade again. Swade leaves it. Slot. Save Beaver. Oh. Big save on the rush up ice by Heinz. A great pass, too, as I didn't expect that puck to go there, but great work to pass that off to Zach Heinz, the senior, who had an assist to the semi on Friday against UNE. Eight goals on the season. But a great pass from Swade. I don't think the defense was expecting that either, but thankfully Beaver was. Thankfully, if you're a Hobart fan, anyway, as he made the save. Beaver showing his talent. I mean, he, he's... As good as it gets, and he's a first year. Now Hobart in the attacking zone. We have 11 minutes remaining in the second period. In front it comes Taurico under pressure. Comes to the near side after the clear. Now N sends a cross ice. What a nifty move that was uh, by Babyak to get it down. And Babyak oh. took some gymnastics sometime because that was a great play to dance out of the way. Fontana up the right wing, sends it behind the goal. After it is Crane. It's 2-1 to one Hobart. Crane leads it last minute, takes the shot block. Excellent block, Redding. Yeah, Waited a bit too long to make that back pass, I think. Last one was open for a moment, but he wasn't when he took the shot. Luciani in the corner, sends it out. One-timer goes wide. That was Ryder. 
Now goes to the end boards, up the wall. Hobart able to get it out. But back was Ryder. Luciani will pick up the puck, send it ahead. Just missed with Spodniak. Interception, Hobart. Back at Dinier. He'll send it to the neutral zone. It's 2-1 Hobart, second period. Adinier pokes it ahead. Lost control of the puck. Now after it, Aquero. A working with Shell. Shell at the corner. Sends it in front. Missed with Alexander. Good effort. Here's Aquero in the corner in front. Wide. Big pressure Hobart on this shift. Out to Wooth. Cross ice swift. Down it goes. Goes behind the goal. Backhand in front. Goes through. Now Spodniak countering. Off the wall. Redding will push it ahead. Hobart back. That was a great play by Swift, too. He wasn't shooting there. He was trying to play that carom off the backboards, and it almost connected on that. Would have been a tap-in had that carom been what he wanted it to be. Great play on that, though, to use the woodwork. 9.15 left, second period. One thing that Coach Krug told me, we can play any style, any kind of game as the puck goes out. Uh, he cited a game last year where they beat Trinity, a very good team at uh, Hartford. A final of one nothing in the 31 game streak they had all those goals but they can win those type of games was his point he prides himself on that Trinity's a lot like this hobart team too most of the time they're big they're physical one of the most uh, potent physical teams in the nescac and not surprised that he would have to adjust a little bit but yeah this team's a bit like a chameleon it doesn't matter what style of play they have to face they can adapt to it and uh, hobart beat trinity this year in a two to one overtime game this year and uh, that was uh, Alexander who had the game-winning goal in that game. Now it is Hobart sending it down with Tyson. After it, Tanner Daniels, who has 10 goals as a first year. Adrian sends it back up ice. Went, took a check near his bench. Well, Adrian, Adrian putting out. We got a delayed penalty here. And it looks like we're going to see that Adrian power play, which is uh, a great chance to tie the game. <laughs> Well, it's funny because Adam Krug wanted a penalty call just before that, about five seconds before, and a hit in front of the Adrian bench. Five seconds later, a different call is made. Now he wants them both in a five-on-three. But I guess we have to be satisfied with a five-on-four advantage here as we'll watch the penalty in the offensive zone. There's that little hook. That's enough to get the uh, ire of the official. And Hobart will lose a player. It's Tristan Fazig who's off. All right, so Adrian already has a power play goal in the game. They were two for three against UNE on power play opportunities. Uh, again, the number, 43.4 coming into the game. They have 67 power play goals this year. Hobart is a, a solid penalty killing unit, top 10 in the country. But again, it, it, it's a formidable, daunting task to stop this power play. Adrian with a chance to tie the game. Spodiak sends it ahead for Reddick, right wing. Now sent down low, near corner, and sent all the way down by Hobart. And chasing it is uh, Shell behind the goal. They look for an offensive chance on a shorthanded try, but ends over the blue line, ends at the right wing, ends with all those power play goals this year. In front it comes, Redding goes down. Let's see if they call that. They don't. That could have been a, another Hobart penalty. And uh, Shields back for Adrian. I think Coach Krug wanted a call there. That one looked okay to me. Booza Vera looked like he made a clean check. The puck was there. I don't think he got him from behind. I think it was right uh, to keep the arms down on that occasion. Poked back by Hobart. We talked a lot about the uh, Adrian penalty kill and what they can do shorthanded. Don't forget Hobart, though. Five shorthanded goals on the season. The thing is, Matthew Iacenza has two of those five, and he's not in the lineup tonight for the Statesman. All right, 50 seconds left on the Adrian power play. Here's Patosha navigating. Goes over the blue line, left wing. Sends it behind the goal at the end boards. Comes along the half wall on the far side. Heinz in front. In front! Went, stopped on the block. Ooh, great job that time by Wooth getting in front of it. Now Wooth is uh, battling at the end boards. There is 30 seconds left in the Adrian power play. That was a great chance for Adrian and Wooth doing the job. I think he lost his stick. And... Uh, Meanwhile, seconds coming off the power play. Loose in front, all the way down. It goes to the neutral zone. Hobart surviving. Ten seconds left on the power play. Here comes Adrian. Patosha shooting. Stopped by Beaver. And there's only five seconds remaining on the power play. Boy, is 
Damon Beaver confident right now. You take a look at him, the first-year goaltender from Ontario. We'll see a couple of stops in the defensive zone. Wooth and Beaver keeping this a 2-1 game. Great passing here by the Bulldogs. They work it out in front, and that was uh, Wooth who was there, but Beaver had to come out and make that save. He lost his stick. And he certainly did. Yeah, here's the shot, too, and that was a stick save by Beaver as well. As you see that piece of lumber right down, down there in your picture. Two big saves from Damon Beaver, the freshman from Whitby, Ontario. Boy, what a find he has been for Hobart. He has been tremendous all year long and keeping that up when it matters the most for the Statesman. Really impressive uh, work by Matthew Wooth, the junior from Colorado. Adrian only has five seconds left on their power play. They win the faceoff, comes out to shield, sent along the wall. We are now at even strength. Adrian has it in the Hobart zone shot. Blocked, comes out to Shields near side. Getting a front was Aquero, and they work it along the half wall, finally comes out to the neutral zone where Shields will send it ahead. No goal scoring in the second period. Ends over the blue line. Aquero knocks him down. Shields close. sends it to the right side. Sent in front, knocked away at the end boards. Now Swade, Swade working, sends it along the wall, goes to the corner. They work behind the goal, Adrian. They're putting on pressure. They were denied on the power play. Now Shields pitching, sends it down low side of the net it goes. Spencer will keep it in. He'll flip it down towards Beaver. They're trying to screen Beaver on some of these shots from the point. Now it comes in front. Swade working. Beaver covers up. What a great shift that was for Jake Swade. He started off with Adrian still on the power play by winning the faceoff in the offensive zone. And they continue that pressure, some excellent pressure from the Bulldogs trying to tie things up 2-1. But Jake Sway, just a freshman from Michigan, did very, very well overall when he tried to uh, start things off for the Bulldogs. And an excellent shift, almost resulting in a goal to tie things up. That just shows how important offensive zone faceoffs can be. All right, back Adrian. They were denied on a power play, but they've kept up the pressure. Hobart came out with good offensive play in the first period, scoring the first two goals. Adrian scoring on a power play in the first period, but we've not had anything in the second period, although there have been opportunities. Now Hobart with an opportunity in front, but it's cleared to the side. I was say, speaking of opportunities. And working is Daniels. That's Buzavera at the corner. Buzavera sends it behind the goal. They send it in front. Last minute shooting, that goes wide. Coming up for it and keeping it in is Bulger. And we're going to have a stoppage with 440 left second period. Two to one Hobart. The name you haven't said much for Hobart is Artem Buzavera, the junior from Ukraine. He had a couple assists against Endicott in the semis, 14 assists on the season, but he's had a quiet night so far. Similar, I suppose, to Spodniak as well, as uh, neither one's been allowed to do all that much as far as creating in the offensive zone, save for a couple of opportunities. Face off in the Adrian zone. 4.40 remaining second period. Uzavera has been very hot in the playoffs as well. Five-game postseason point streak. Those two assists against Endicott, a goal and an assist. Started things off in the NEHC quarterfinals against Castleton. All right, Luciani against Fassig on the faceoff. Adrian controlling. Comes out to the neutral zone. Back is Swift. Sends a cross ice for Wooth. Has a stick now. Sends it ahead. But he did some great work without a stick. When Adrian had his power play working, here comes Luciani. Sends it up to Spodniak. Right wing. Spodniak with Wooth back. Takes the shot. Stopped in front. Loose at the half wall. Pressure with Redding and Spodniak. Swift in the corner for Hobart. Sends a cross ice. Big check by Redding. Play at the neutral zone. Adrian pushing it back towards the corner where Swift is after it. This has become a low-scoring game, which started out to be a high-scoring game. Well, there's been chances, but you're right. The defensive play and the physicality is heated up a, a little bit here in the second period. All right, getting back on the back check, Babiak. Now sent in front for Alexander shooting. That's blocked. Getting a front climb, rebound, stopped by Tallarico. Oh, and that was Luca Cuero. That's the one you want. You want the puck on his stick, and 
Can't see his eyes, but I watched his head go right toward the rafters after he took that shot, and the red light didn't go on. I don't know if he's rolling his eyes, looking heavyward, or a little bit of both, but you watch it right here as well. Aquero, there's the opportunity. Guns loaded, and Tallarico in perfect position. And again, it was uh, <laughs> Klein initially with the block. There's Shane Shelley, the exact same reaction as linemate Luke Aquero had. We could have been up two goals was the reaction. Yep. <laughs> that was, Aquero looked very good in that first period. I think it's more how aren't we up two goals is kind of what he was thinking. Aquero has 21 goals this year now with his goal, the second goal of this game in the first period. That was on a four-on-four -four breakaway. Now Adrian with Murphy, left wing. Murphy was stopped on a breakaway in the first period on a great save by Beaver. <laughs> Stop right there, now wasn't Now in he? front... Loose in the slot. Here comes Hobart. And pushing it up ahead, Patterson. Back his ends. Icing. Jared Patterson made that big check in the defensive zone. And again, that's the physicality we've been talking about as you take a look at Damian Beaver. Here's the check. Patterson. Bang. That's one way to finish your check. Murphy, nothing you do about that. But again, still a good opportunity. Shields with the shot. Another save by Beaver. And he is just looking... Super confident right now. It seems like it'll take a very special shot or a gritty goal to beat him right now and tie things up for Adrian. All right, Swade on the faceoff for Adrian. Swade has seven goals, 11 assists. Had a goal the other day. First goal of the game. After uh, a big body check by Swade. We just saw that body check by uh, Patterson. Swade had one against UNE early in the game. I always love to see it when a physical play turns into a scoring chance. Still no goal scoring in this second period. Ends over the blue line. Leads it for Heinz. Heinz working with ends. Takes the shot. Short side saved by Beaver. Covering it up immediately, too. His puck control has really impressed me. And Yeah, this is about what you'd expect at this time of the game in a 2-1 hockey game. Every inch of ice will be contested. Every stoppage anywhere near the goaltender is going to be met with defensemen coming in to clear that crease. And watch the... Bulldogs scoring chance again. They're getting more of these, and Beavers had to be very good. Nice drop pass. Ends with a save, little bobble. Bulldog player trying to can opener that free, and that's what drew the attention of everybody out there on the ice in white and orange. The shots on goal in this game, 20-20. Very close. For a while, they had it very much off on the scoreboard. I'm glad to see they've mostly fixed it. All right, face off in the Hobart zone. Comes out to Klein. Klein. Sends it along the wall, behind the goal, Luciani. Luciani reverses, looks for the wrap, reverses again. Now goes to the corner. Here he comes, shooting block, but what a move by Luciani. Hopefully he's playing a video game on easy right now, Luciani. Great moves in the offensive zone. All right, working. Adrian getting back, and uh, the shot was taken by Tanner Daniels, and Tal Rico is able to come up with it. It's getting uh, physical again. Tanner Daniels with goals in his last couple of games. Five-game point streak. Haven't had a lot of opportunities tonight for the freshman from Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. And is there a penalty coming up at the end of this play? As Daniels' shot was taken. And, yeah, they are leading a Hobart player to the box. Buzavera. There was some putting and pushing and shoving there. And Artem Buzavera is going to go. You'll watch at the end of this play. Here's the chance. Great poise to stay with us, Buza Vera. Yep, there's the slash, and right away he's proclaiming his innocence with the referee making the call, sending Adrian to that power play and a golden opportunity to tie things up late here in the second. He was like, I didn't mean it, <laughs> but it was still a slash. And I don't think he did. It wasn't looking No, he definitely did not. He's going for the puck, and unfortunately, got to call it. Hit the goaltender. All right, again, the Adrian power play. 2 10 left in the. Now, what's a lock together over there right now? Looking like a couple of deer. Luciani and one of the Hobart players. The Antlers are locked up. You'll see that every once in a while. They're both 16s out there. Zach Tyson, too, just got their helmets caught together. Couldn't uh, separate. That's what drew the whistle. All right, Luciani <laughs> against Tyson. Adrian has been denied a power play chance in this period. They have another chance here. Down a goal. They have it with Went sending it out to Shields. Now Spodniak works in. Good block. And uh, knocked back by Tyson. Excellent work on the penalty kill early on here. His penalty kill doesn't get enough respect for this uh, Hobart team. That's saying something to get plenty of respect. Comes to Luciani here. Spodniak lost the puck. Was winding up to shoot, and he couldn't control it. But it's sent back by Adrian and Spodniak. 
goes behind the goal. There's Luciani. His power play goal put them in this game. Spodniak in the slot, sends it down low, ends, reverses, ends with all his power play goals. Play at the half wall. Shields works to the corner. Minute five left on the Adrian power play. Ends. Sends it down, but Hobart with Swift knocks it all, all the way down. Hey, you got to credit uh, Spondiak for keeping that play alive. Now ends sends it to the middle, knocked back. Shields is back. There's 45 seconds left on the power play. We're approaching a minute to go in the second period. See how quickly Adrian wants to bring the puck back up the ice, though. This time, Potosha. not allowed to do it. Potosha. Good work that time by Crane. Sending Patosha back. Now Adrian finally comes up ice with Heinz. Speeding. Heinz to the circle. Leaves it. In front. Loose. Sent back to the blue line. Klein sends it to the corner. Patosha in front. Lost the puck. And backhanded to the blue line. Kept in Adrian. 15 seconds left in the power play. Comes to the middle. Klein. One-timer. Oh. Save. Beaver. Wow. He flew across the crease. I'm sure we'll see this again from right to left to make that save. I was just marveled by the puck movements of this Bulldogs power play. I was marveled. That man was not. Damon Beaver will watch it again. Tic-tac-toe passing. A great opportunity coming up here. As set up in a perfect position for that shot. And Beaver across the crease to make the save once again and keep his team in front by one. Here's Boy. this big save coming up, I believe, right? Yeah, this pass will come right to that right side, and there it was. Wow, what a save yeah, by Beaver. Amazing. Great sequence there. And uh, the penalty is over. There's 15 seconds left in this scoreless second period. Hobart is two for two on the penalty kill, Rob, in this period. And that's a big factor as we uh, are close to intermission. Well, it's huge because you're playing with fire anytime you put that Adrian power play out there, but I've been very impressed by this Hobart PK in this game overall, and why not? You know, 89% on the year just under coming into this game. They have been very good, but even better, I think, than that tonight. All right, Luciani on the faceoff. Redding needs to shoot. He sends a cross ice. It goes down low. It's blocked. Time running out in front. Spodniak hit the ice. Adrian put on good pressure. There was nine seconds left when the faceoff was dropped at the dot, when the puck was dropped, and uh, Adrian had a chance there. And Aquero, I think, may have saved a goal, too, because the reason that Spodniak went down, we'll watch it here, number seven, Spodniak. Here's Aquero coming in. No, he just fell. I thought Aquero might have gotten a touch on that. Spodniak just lost his balance. So he's had some Murphy's Law-type luck out there in the second period. A couple of chances with a... Puck bounced over his stick in a one-time attempt, just kind of losing an edge in a situation late in this period where he went at a decent opportunity for a goal, but still all to play for coming up in the last 20 minutes. You really can't ask for much better than we're getting in a national championship game here in Beverly, Mass. tonight. All right, Adrian seeking a back-to-back -back national championship. Hobart looking for its first national championship. It's a one-goal game. Hobart leading Adrian, great offense versus great defense. So many good, talented players on this ice. A tremendous atmosphere here today at Endicott College. I'm Steve Eccioni with Rob Kennedy. We're back in about 10 minutes. We'll set the scene for the third period once again in this national championship game. Hobart 2, Adrian 1. You're watching the NCAA Division Three Men's Ice Hockey Championship. We'll see you soon from Endicott College. We have an exciting game brewing in the national championship game, the 2023 NCAA Division III Men's Ice Hockey Championship. I'm Steve Vecchioni with Rob Kennedy. Hobart leading Adrian 2-1, to one, Rob. Coach Mark Taylor said this morning to me, don't give Adrian space. Play him tight. Well, they've held Adrian to one goal so far. And as we take a look at some uh, some plays in this game, it helps to have a great goalie 
or two. Certainly does. That second period categorized by blocks, hits, and saves. And there's a save from Damon Beaver. He made plenty of those. And down at the other end of the rink, Nick Tallarico doing his job as well. A couple of point-blank saves to keep his team down just by one. Very important. That third goal is going to be really important if Hobart can get it. I think it's one of those situations where the next goal is going to be hugely pivotal if it comes. But it didn't come in that second period. The goaltender's too good that time. That's Spodniak trying to bounce that up. You see his reaction. He's flustered and frustrated a bit. But these goalies can do that to you. And there's Beaver again showing that outstanding puck control, absorbing that shot. It's going no place once he's got a hold of it. But Adrian did start getting more looks and more attempts as that period wound on. You talked about not giving them space in the offensive zone. They did find more and more of that as the second period ground to a halt. And I would expect they'll see opportunities in the third as well, which means that man right there, Damon Beaver, is going to have to be huge, as is his counterpart, Nick Tallarico, at the other end. Because if Hobart gets another one, that two-goal lead will be Canyon-esque in a game like this. So Beaver has 23 saves, Tallarico 18. Uh, don't want to overlook Tal Rico. He's been no. terrific on some point-blank looks after giving up the first two goals, but he was under pressure early in this game. Tal Rico was pulled uh, in the second period of the game against the University of New England as they were in the middle of their uh, run in that second period. And Coach Krug made the point of telling me that it was not about how Tal Rico was playing. It was more about how the team was playing. He wanted to shake things up, and he went out of his way to assure Tal Rico that he – is the starting goalie he was going to start today. And I think Tal Rico, we've been talking a lot about Beaver, but Tal Rico has uh, played terrific, keeping Adrian within one goal. I'm always impressed by the mental fortitude of goaltenders, especially because they have all the pressure on them. It's the only player on the ice where you make a mistake, the red light goes on, everyone cheers, and uh, you're the guy they uh, kind of call the sieve. But Tal Rico, he has really impressed me here, the way he's bounced back. Allowed five goals in 30 minutes against UNE. Tonight, just the two goals. That's what he's done in most of the last games. He has allowed more than two and eight out of his last ten. He has played very, very well tonight. You can't fault him in either of the two goals that Hobart has scored. These goaltenders, they have been putting on a show at both ends of the ice. Nick Tallarico for Adrian and, of course, Damon Beaver for the Hobart Statesman. So Adrian beat Geneseo in the championship game last year, 5-2. Their goalkeeper was Cameron Gray, who was an amazing goalkeeper. Yep. He had 28 saves in that game. Coach Krug calling him our backstop in the victory over Geneseo. But what was, what was interesting to me about that game was that Adrian had 25 blocks in the game. And when you look at Hobart today, they have 19 blocks, 19 after two periods. Adrian has seven. But those 19 blocks... The Hobart defense selling out to, to prevent Adrian from scoring. Also shows, though, that Adrian is having much more puck possession in the offensive zone than they had in that first period, too, and the chances are starting to come. So I mean, a lot of black and blue puck marks on these Hobart players, and they don't mind that at all if they skate away with a championship. But they'll be blocking more shots, you know, in the next 20 minutes coming up. And they do that enough, they'll be skating back to Geneva for the first time as Kings of Division Three. All right, so these teams have only played one game. And that was last year in the quarters. And it was Adrian winning 7-4. Much higher scoring game on pace than uh, this game so far. And uh, <laughs> when I asked Coach Krug and Coach Taylor about last year's game, both said, yes, a lot of the same tendencies, different personnel. I wonder how much that has factored into anything we've seen today. I'm not sure it has, really. I mean, yeah, that game is, is quite a bit ago. So much has happened between these two teams. Personnel has changed a little bit, and I, I'm not sure that's anything besides a uh, distant memory. Yeah, they know about it. Yes, they certainly remember it, but I don't think that's something that weighed in very heavily at all. Yes, they have only played just once. Not enough time to work up any kind of rivalry or anything else besides that uh, one meeting they had last year in the quarterfinals. The Bulldogs won on their way to their national championship. They were supposed to play another time, and that was just before COVID. The game was canceled. Yep. Uh, they were supposed to play in the first round of the tournament. So here we go. Hobart's going right to left. Adrian left to right. We've been talking about the historical factors in this game with Hobart looking for its first title and Adrian looking to defend. How will this third period go? A major question as Maurer is back for Hobart. We're underway with play at the neutral zone now. Spencer sending it down for Adrian. They're going left to right as we are in the third period of this national championship game. That's Tyson right wing. Tyson working. Sends it in front, and it goes through with Buzavera there. Then Tal Rico had to be alerted. It is sent out to the neutral zone, and we have a stoppage. 
with 34 seconds having elapsed in this third period. All the goal scoring coming in the first period. Hobart with the first two goals, Adrian with the next goal, and then we have a conversation between a ref and a linesman. And where the faceoff's going to be overall. I didn't see exactly why the whistle was blown before him. Maybe it's, yeah, Enz is coming up now, the injured player behind the play. That's why we didn't see it. And watch Puzavera going right to the front of the net. Enz will be injured at the end of this play. I'll see if we can pick up exactly what happened. There he is down in the corner. So we didn't see exactly what happened. That's the reason the whistle blow, uh, blew, excuse me. And that's not a guy for Adrian you want to see banged up, Ty ends. He's so important offensively to them, especially on the power play. As you mentioned, Steve, he leads the nation in power play goals. Referees talking about this. Matt Fuller, Matt Terreri, the referees. Dan Barreca, Cam Gobert, the linesman. And uh, as they talk here, again, the, uh, the question, I think, is... Uh, where do you drop the puck? Where do you the drop the puck? They're talking to the captain, Luciani, and now Coach Krug would like to talk to Matt Terreri. Might be a situation, too, and again, we didn't see it. I didn't see it anyway, and Coach Krug may have. What was the reason that ends was down in the first place? Is it something they want to take a look at, perhaps? We'll see. They're going to look at something. And go over to the scorer's table, yeah. Now, the video monitor is over on this side of the ice. So now they're going to go over and talk to Mark Taylor over on the Hobart bench. We saw ends down in the corner again. We didn't see exactly what caused him to drop. He's over on the bench right now. Tended to by a trainer. Looks like he's going to be all right. But they are now they're taking a peek. Something yep. out here. Now they're taking a look. Well, 34 seconds into the third period, we have a replay review. I think they're looking to see if this is a major penalty. There it is. Oh, yeah, that's what they're taking a look at right there. That hit from Zach Tyson on Hobart, and that did catch ends up high, shoulder to head. So we'll see how the referees rule this one. That's the reason ends went down. We what? saw him down. We didn't see it when it happened, but just a glancing blow where the contact was certainly up high. And they do pay attention to the contact of the head penalties for sure. And that could go either way, I think, but there was contact for sure. And again, early in the game last year with uh, Geneseo and Adrian, there was a contact to the head penalty early in the first period, which led to two power play goals for Adrian, a shorthanded goal for Geneseo. But uh, again, a, a major penalty call for Adrian against UNE led to the game-winning goal. Nothing. Well, the referee just kind of shook his head over at the bench and said, nope, nothing. It was inadvertent. It was. That's why I said I wasn't sure exactly how this was going to go. Take it here, and there's the contact. Like I said, glancing blow, and you see that the captain, Tyson, really didn't seem to know much about it. There's no way he was lining up ends on that play, but the contact was there, which is why I was wondering to see how the referee and their judgment would make that ruling. They decided no penalty, and again, they can only call a major. You can't call a two-minute minor on a review. All right, Luciani goes down in the attacking zone. The counter by Hobart with Aquero. Knocked back by Adrian, but the loose puck again. Hobart with the counter. Alexander sent it to the right side. After it, Aquero at the half wall. Kept into the blue line, Alexander. Sent towards Talrico. He gobbles it up. 1902 remaining in the third period. Adrian 25 4 2 on the year. Hobart 28 2. <laughs> 11 straight wins for Hobart. And again, the most goals they've allowed in a game this year was seven, but that's a an outlying type game. They just do not give up a lot of goals. Imagine though if they were down on a five minute major penalty kill and that's the same thing you and he had to deal with. Of course it was an overtime and Adrian capitalized on that power play to win. I almost thought history was maybe in some ways repeating itself here as they took a look at that as it may have happened again albeit not in overtime. But still a pivotal, pivotal call by the referees. All right, a Denier back for Adrian. And again, Coach Krug says we pride ourselves on playing any kind of style. And right now they're in a tight, low-scoring game, 2-1, to one, trailing in the third period. As Mark Taylor, meanwhile, for Hobart, seeking his first national championship with all his wins, 377. Now we have a penalty coming up. Penalty, perhaps. Referee behind the play. It looked like he was calling it. The hands went up, although now that I see it, maybe not. 
No, I saw the referee with his hand up, but I think he was throwing that up when the whistle was blown. So he had no penalty coming up. I spoke too soon. All right, we're a minute 37 into this kind of slow starting third period. The calm before the st uh, storm, if you will. Perhaps. All right, on the faceoff here in the Adrian <laughs> zone as they put the net back. That's what it was. That went off its moorings. Do have a low vantage point here a little bit, so. All right, well, Fontana will take the faceoff. That's why I didn't see it right off. Or Buzavera, rather, for Hobart. Now, Adrian with possession up the wall. Back for Hobart is Bulger, lost the puck. Spodniak works his way in behind the goal. Whirling now, play stopped. And yeah, that's off, it's mooring down there as well as two players, one in white, one that's in black. That's a break for Hobart, I it think, because Spodniak was making a move after coming from behind the goal, and he was looking to make a play. Yeah, Patosha was down in the goal mouth. Didn't see exactly which uh, Hobart Defenseman he was with, Maurer, probably. I think those are the two that were uh, tangled up, and they both went into the post. Face-off, as you see, stays inside the Adrian offensive zone. All right, face-off to the left of Beaver. Patosha on the face-off, Adrian. They control. Luciani, at the, rather, May at the corner. Now sent up to Babyak, sends a cross ice. Sent to the end boards. May after it at the half wall. Calgin working with May. Sent back to the neutral zone. Adrian trailing by a goal. Third period with 17.45 to go third period. Fasig hits the ice for Hobart. Is able to keep it in, though, working with his teammate. Now it comes out to Wooth, sent to the corner. After it is Fasig. Behind the goal, Belov had it taken away. Adrian looks to create some opportunities, but Hobart getting back. You see the... Fundamentals with Hobart. Stifled the neutral zone. And now working in. Backhand save by Tauriko on the rush by Hartman. Now Tanner Hartman again. He hasn't had many chances, but all the ones he's had, he's turned into dangerous looking scoring opportunities. Kid can score some goals. Just a freshman from Chicago, seven on the season. Three game streak without a point, but he has certainly been close and had opportunities here tonight. And that's the word I'm going to use here, opportunities, as he wheeled his way through two defenders. Someone's going to cash in an opportunity here in the third period. That's what this becomes in a tight game like this. Who will take advantage of the chances they get? Adrian sends it all the way down. That may be icing. It is. So we're going to do it again in the Adrian zone. Once again, we have not had any goal scoring since the first period. Hobart had the first two goals. Adrian had a power play goal. And we have stayed scoreless since that point when Adrian scored. Yeah, three goals in just under five minutes, in fact. The first one at 7.24, the last at 12.19. Shane Shell and Luca Cuero for Hobart. Tie ends, pulling one back for the defending champs. That was Tanner, Tanner Daniels with the shot. So once again, at a third faceoff in this sequence, Buzavera on the faceoff for Hobart. Comes to the end boards. Sent up the wall. Adrian trying to clear. And Spencer can't clear it. Kept in. Daniels sent to the corner. Buzavera sends it out to the blue line. Hobart pressure. Goes behind the goal. Backhand in front. Sent through the crease. Adrian able to clear. They come back on the counter. Adrian in the attacking zone with Murphy. Takes the shot. It's blocked. Now Murphy goes after it. Another Hobart block. They've had a ton of them in this game. They are very good at just clogging the passing and shooting lanes, both at neutral ice and in their defensive zone. But Adrian, a very dangerous team. It, it doesn't take much for Adrian to score sometimes. They, they, glimmer, score, they score in bunches. Glimmer of daylight's all it takes. There's one maybe, but that's for Hobart. And it's covered up by Tal Rico off that carom. So, uh, again, 340 into this third period. The shots on goal in the game are pretty close. Take a look at what happened here. Yeah, Tristan Fassi is going to come to goal here in that little spin play. That's Tyson. Yeah, Tyson made a nice play. Here's Fassi. He'll come in late as the puck is down, trying to hope that Tallarico left it laying a bit, but the netminder covered it right up. 2-1 to one Hobart, third period. Face off to the left of Tallarico. Fassi on the face off Hobart, but controlled by the Bulldogs. Heinz takes a check from Hartman. And Hartman with some good work, preventing an Adrian trip up ice, but now Adrian able to collect. That's Swade backhanding in the front, goes through. 
after it is ends, taken away. Hines can't keep it in. Great work by Belov oh, yeah. to send it out to the neutral zone. It's a Mack truck right there. Belov making sure that puck went over the blue line. This is a physical third period. Love it. It's a close game. Belov leaving it for Fasig. That goes wide of Tauriko. Ooh. Kept in by Hobart. They work the right wing in front. It comes. Blocked. That's a good block by Klein on Aquero. Now Aquero goes after it, but Adrian counter. And here comes Enns. Enns will send it down. It's 2-1 Hobart, third period. 15-20 remaining in regulation. Adrian looking to forecheck in the Hobart zone. Spodniak marking, but now a stretch pass ahead for Aquero. Aquero at the corner, reverses. Shields with the check. A couple players converge along with Alexander and Aquero, but it's Adrian coming away with Spencer. Yeah, that, Shields is the reason why that didn't get all the way through to Aquero. He made a nice play at the end. All right, Spodniak working up ice. Spodniak in front of the goal, but it, Hobart has possession. Now they go up the right side. We are a little end-to-end -end now. Good work in front of Aquero. That goes wide off the feed by Fontana. Good work, Fontana. Setting up Aquero. Now Lucifer and Fontana goes through. What a great deflection Fontana had. A better save from Talarico. Boy, Fontana's played a great game for Hobart tonight. Spodniak along the wall tries to clear. Kept in at the slot. Hobart with some great forechecking. Good work by Crane. But Adrian able to send it up to the neutral zone. Trailing by one here in this third period. Two players converge on Spodniak. Luciani in front. Knocked away from the puck. Getting back defensively was Bulger. Now sent out to the neutral zone. Adrian just cannot get loose. But they try again. Here comes the rush up ice. May along the half wall. Sent around. After it for Adrian was Ryder. But now Hobart trying to formulate an attack. Taking off the play. May with a good back check. Now end to end, but not a lot happening for Adrian in terms of getting shots towards Beaver. Yeah, Luciano, uh, or Luciani especially had the uh, chance. Let's see how Luciani and Connor May, the two on Nario Natives were setting things up in the offensive zone and back down the other end. We'll watch the statesman here, and that deflection, you'll watch it come from Khalil Fontana. Actually, it was not Fontana who got the deflection on, that was Aquero that time who got the deflection, put that up high, forcing a great save out of Tallarico. 13.40 left third period. Face off at center ice. Fassig against Patosha. Fassig has been their best face off man here in Beverly. All right. Adrian able to push it forward, but we have a offside or did it go out? I can't. Deflected up into the mesh. That's where the face off will be right back at center ice by the looks of things. That's where they'll drop the puck as we take a look at Damon Beaver. Freshman goaltender having a tremendous night. Both goalies really showing their stuff. It's been a highlight reel night for both goaltenders. All right, off the face off. Hobart pushing it down. That's Klein being marked by Fasig. Takes a check from Fasig. Adrian trying to work the neutral zone. Potosha lost control. Back comes Hobart Belov. Save, follow. That was uh, Hartman Belov with the follow and the save by Talarico. He's playing a great game, yeah, Talarico. This third line's been a nuisance for Hobart overall. That's Fassig with Hartman and Belov. And Hartman coming in, just bulldozing his way to the goal, forcing a great save here to Talarico. There's the rebound. There's Belov on the forehand. And tremendous positioning by Talarico to make that save and recover quickly to deny the second chance opportunity by Belov as well. We've been focusing a lot on Beaver, but Tal Rico's played a great game. Sure has. All right. Hobart sending it down in the Adrian zone. At the point is Perryman. Play along the wall. Now Shell behind the goal. Shell looks to center. He made a great pass to Maurer for the game-winning goal the other day. Comes out to Perryman, takes the shot. That goes wide. Alexander after it. Hobart with good forecheck, but now Adrian emerging. And they will come up ice, trailing by one with Murphy. Murphy is knocked off the puck. 
Goes behind Beaver. Murphy after it. Now sends it to the blue line. Here comes Spencer. Spencer sends it down. That's wide. Now in the corner, Adrian trying to keep it in, but it's sent all the way back. Spencer back defensively to the right side, Fontana. He goes to the half wall. Fontana is taken off the play. Stays with it, though. A bump by ends. Adrian in their defensive zone, able to come away. And now they work the right wing. Heinz lost the puck on the pass, intercepted. Back Fontana, Fontana leaving it. And that was Crane who had it knocked away. Behind the goal, Fontana, who's very active, as you've been saying, Rob. He's Eight. impressed me tonight, he really has. His yeah. fourth line entirely has, too, and they did in the opening contest as well against Endicott. Swade in the corner. Sends it to the slot. Here comes Babyak shooting. Blocked. Now ends at the corner. Back to Heinz. Hobart able to clear. And they push it down. Babyak joining the play late. Just tapping his stick. Calling for the puck. Oh, that was a collision. And a hard fall back behind the goal. Austin Klein improved. is back there. And yeah, over on the bench. They are irate. And Coach Adam Krug saw that all the way and wants a call. Does he want a major call there? To see that again overall, if it was just yeah. two guys battling for the puck, or there was a stick in the skates of the man you see right there, Austin Klein, the defense. We'll see it here. That's and Babiak and Klein. Well, a stick definitely was there. And that's it wasn't a major is the thing. That's Tyson. Oh, he, he got hit in the head, I think, too. Well, primary contact wouldn't have been there. First of all, let's hope he's okay. Yep. That's the first thing. That was Zach Tyson who's been in the middle of a couple of calls here, penalty situations and replays. And he's in another one right now. Thankfully, Austin Klein is up, and he does look okay. And that's great to see he's skating off there, but he took a pretty good shot there. He did. He went careening into the boards, feet first. So and we'll see boards, if anything was called there. They don't give. Well, nothing was called on the ice. And if anything is going to be called, it would have to be a major, and I just don't see that as being uh, likely. And you could look overall and see the leg come in here and take the legs out of Austin Klein. Certainly a two-minute uh, minor, no doubt about that. But it's not a major. It's why you can't review it. But there is no penalty there. No. So Might have been a minor, but again, it wasn't called on the ice. Here comes Adrian with 11-15 left third period. They're down one. Wooth can't clear. Kept in. Here comes the shot ends. And that is deflected out. And Booza Vera got that deflection to the center, alertly saw where that puck was, came out, and the uh, big number 28, alternate captain, Artem Booza Vera, made that block and took a scoring a chance away from Adrian. It's this third period, kind of crawling along, 11-11 left. And sure, if I think it's crawling along. Folks over on the Hobart bench across the way really want to see that clock speed up. They Swayed, have a one-goal lead. Swayed on the faceoff for Adrian against Fasig. Now you got ends on the left side. He has a big shot, and he can score from where he is located. But trying to get through that Hobart wall today has been really hard with all the blocks. And pushing it ahead for Hobart Patterson. Taken yeah. back by Adrian, and now we have a player down for Hobart. We're going to have a penalty on Adrian. Yeah, it's going to go against Is that Went or ends? I think it's ends. And you heard the thump as he drilled one of the Hobart players. And uh, slow to get up. I think that is uh, Hartman. Hartman is slow to get up. It is Hartman. So he's on the ice, and ends will sit. And Hobart, power play number four for the Statesman tonight, and a chance to get some insurance with a 2-1 two uh, two lead already. So two players hitting the ice hard in the last minute or so, and they're going to have to help uh, Hartman to the bench a little bit here. A frustration play, perhaps, by ends. And they wanted the call down to the other end, didn't get it. We'll see the replay right here. There's 49, and, yeah, he's mixed up with Hartman there. Jostling, and, yeah, just kind of threw an arm out up there and swatted him down, made contact up high, and got a roughing call. So we're going to see the Hobart power play. And in this game, on the power play, they are 0 for 2. Chance to go up two goals. But you got to watch, as we've been talking about, the Adrian shorthanded opportunities. Yep. They have eight shorthanded goals this year. Hobart leading 2-1 to one on the power play. 
speeding after it, Luciani with Swift back. I mentioned last time he's the guy to watch shorthanded, Luciani with three shorties on the season. Hobart had one power play goal against Endicott, and it was a big one. It broke a 1-1 tie in the third period on Friday. They're they, the game winner. And ten and a half remaining here, third period. They lead by one. Trying to go up two. And this has become a low-scoring game. It started out with goals, but Swift now has the puck down low, Alexander. Adrian on the penalty kill. Swift keeps it in along the wall. Cleared. That's a big clear by Adrian because they had some tired legs out there. They need at least a partial change. That's what they'll get. Maybe I can climb now out there on the blue line defensively. All right, we're halfway through regulation. 9.50 left in the third period. There's 45 seconds left on the power play for Hobart. They lead by one. Big 45, isn't it? All right. Here is Howell sending a left side in front, and it goes through. But the Hobart power, power play continues. Here's Patterson at the half wall. This is the unit that scored that power play goal, too. Against Endicott, it was Howell who got the game winner. Wet tries to clear. Finally, Adrian does. And there's only 20 seconds now remaining on the Hobart power play. Ends is in the penalty box. Of course, uh, Adrian wants to get him back on the ice with all his scoring potential. It goes through, now comes in front. Adrian pokes it forward into the neutral zone. Only five seconds left on the power play. Abiax had a good penalty killing shift since coming on halfway through, just made that clear, and he's chasing the puck now. Babiak after it, we're at even strength. Big moment for Adrian at the end of this uh, penalty. They were able to kill it off. So now it's even strength. May, left wing. May sends it in front. Again, Hobart back. And getting back on the back check was Crane. Now up the left side, Fontana shot. Save Tower Rico. Loose. It stays 2-1 Hobart. 8.30 to go third period. Back comes Adrian. They survived the penalty. Now they're looking to tie once again. It's been a long time since we've, since we've had a goal in this game, and Beaver covers up. And uh, Beaver is right at his average right now. He only allows one a game, and that's what Adrian has. Now it's about two periods ago that we saw that goal. So we'll take a look at the Hobart opportunity on the power play. Good rising shot. Tallarico, a great save up high. Khalil Fontana again. Saying his name an awful lot tonight. He's an everything but score. The freshman from Duncan, B.C. Played the BCHO for Coquitlam, the Express. A very good team out west in Western Canada. Face off in the Hobart zone. Up the right side, Hartman pushes it ahead. Goes behind Tallarico. Hartman after it. Hartman uh, got back in the game. He's all right. It's going to take a lot to take any player out of this game tonight. Look out. Luciani in the circle, in front, goes behind the goal. Spodniak lurking right in front. You got three players surrounding Spodniak in front. It comes to the slot. That's Redding. From the half wall, the shot with Spodniak there. Save Beaver. Before that, the defenseman, Austin Maurer, came back. I really liked watching them kind of collapse as the puck went around the offensive zone. We'll watch Maurer number 18 on this chance as he'll make another block in front. There he is right there making the block. Second chance opportunity. That shell has been very good preventing the puck coming through to Beaver. It did at the end. Puck was going wide anyway. Beaver making the save and holding on for the faceoff. Under eight to go here in regulation time. Each goalie has 26 saves in this game. Both goalies uh, have stood out in the game. Keeping this at 2-1, to one, there have been a lot of really good saves. Some great A saves, if you will. And now it comes back to the neutral zone with Shields sending across ice. Now up the right side, it's Heinz. In front it comes. Heinz after it. Alexander able to send it back all the way down. Is that going to be on goal? It is. Back is Spencer. Adrian will send it up the wing. Play at the neutral zone. Swade pushes it forward. Back is Hartman. A correction at Patterson. Sent up the wall. Adinier will send it behind the goal. That's Lastman. Lastman will work his way up ice for Hobart. They lead 2-1. to one. Puck goes out. 
Yeah, so difficult to get things going in the offensive zone for Adrian. They've had some opportunities, but more in the second and late first than here in the third period. And that's what's got to be frustrating this Adrian team. And Coach Adam Krugs talked about the mental toughness of this Bulldogs club. But right now, that mental toughness will be really tested because it's got to be extremely frustrating to have a high-powered offense like this and not be able to get the looks you're used to getting. And once again, we have a stoppage now with 6.52 remaining in this third period. You talk about Damon Beaver. Hobart has a great tradition of goaltenders. Uh, they had a goalkeeper named Keith Longo back from uh, 2005 to 2009. He had a career, Rob, 930 save percentage. He is one of those alums that Mark Taylor talks about when he says, if I get my first national title, I'm going to be thinking about my alums. I'm sure a lot of them are watching this game right now. Some, I'm sure, are here. This means an awful lot to the Hobart community and the entire Geneva region, I know. All right. Hobart up ice after it is Tyson in the corner. They're in the attacking zone, leading by one. Now, we're, we're not even close yet to the end of the game, but uh, remember, Adrian with the extra skater tied the game the other day if we ever get to that point. But right now, it's one... Goal lead Hobart, 6.15 to go. Play at the neutral zone with Shields. As you said, it's still early for that, but it's something I was something thinking about. Think of, something it to is. think about, yeah. I was. If we stay this way. Now, Redding shot Ooh. deflected. I think Beaver may have touched that and went out, but he looked around for it. He did, and Brad Summers came in front, too, and was just a little bit late in setting that screen. That's what he wanted to do was get in front, and distract the goaltender, Beaver may have been a little bit tardy on the spot to get there, but did kind of come through and buzz the tower a bit and distracted Beaver. All right, once again, it's Luciani against Aquero, two great players in the face-off circle right now. Luce comes out to Shields, Shields along the wall. That goes high in the air. Beaver looks for it, comes in front. Luciani after it, the Hobart defense converging, and finally it's sent back down. That's Klein for Adrian, winds it around for Shields. 5.50 to go, third period, two to one Hobart, national championship game here in Beverly, Massachusetts. The Raymond J. Bork Arena, Ray Bork, all-time all great for Boston, has his name attached to this really intimate setting here. It is. All right, here's Redding in the circle. Centers it, Spodniak, score! Adrian Spodniak, they've tied the game at 14.30. But who Spodniak has been quiet here in Beverly. Well, he's not quiet anymore. The Sid Watson winner, NCHA player of the season, first team All-American, has got his 30th goal of the season. First to do that for Adrian since 2009. And what a huge goal this is, tying things up in the third. And I don't even know how he got that shot on goal. He was wrapped up. Hobart had him played well defensively. But it doesn't matter. That's the kind of hands he has. And a quick shot ties things up. Goal 30 for the senior from Slovakia. He got it around Brendan Howell, number 90. And I'm not sure there. how. <laughs> he, he did, but they, I mean, they were blocking everything today. So it, Spodniak, it, it, it was a, a major point of emphasis for Mark Taylor to control Spodniak and Luciani. Finally, Spodniak getting a goal in this tournament in the final four teams now play at the neutral zone we are tied at two with under five to go hobart they led to nothing it's now two two this is turning into a, another classic type finish somebody's going to be a hero now that's right two two 440 to go push forward towards beaver who is Stopping the puck there, he has allowed his second goal of the game, but Spodniak scoring. You mentioned uh, he was going for his 30th goal, and he gets it. Now Sean Skelly with 30 goals in 2009. Spodniak gets it here, the same assists. That assist of the ends goal, Matthew Redding and Alessio Luciani have set up that tying goal for Spodniak. Adrian. Four checking in this 2-2 game. Late now, third period. After it for Hobart. Tanner Daniels loose in the slot. Tauriko makes the stop on the shot in front. 
Pressure Hobart now. Great pushback. Spencer behind the goal defensively. In front it comes. Daniels is there. Went is able to push it out. And now up ice is Riley Murphy. Now Adrian Murphy shot. Stopped in front. Pressure Adrian. Murphy behind the goal. Working with Redding who made that pass to Spodniak. Goes behind the goal. Murphy at the half wall. 3.45 to go third period. Adrian and Hobart are tied at two. Adrian for checking. Shields sends it behind the goal. Going down in a heap is Summers. We'll see if they call anything there. They don't. Here comes Hobart. Open ice for Aquero. Over the blue line. To the half wall. Aquero working. Lost the puck. Back comes Adrian. Ahead it goes. Luciani offside. Just a stride offside. He was lurking and waiting just a couple steps behind the defenders. And that pass found him, but he was just a stride too quick. Well, Tudor had broken in alone. He was the hero of the semifinals against UNE. We'll see it right here. Yeah, just couldn't quite hold the blue line with that trailing left skate. And the faceoff back down in front of the Hobart bench. All right, here we go. Faceoff outside the blue line. Hobart able to work it up ice with Fontana. Fontana goes down. Shields back defensively. Hobart, four check, comes to the far side. Adrian sends it up ice. Here they come with Luciani. Right side, that is Spodniak, who tied the game here late in the third period. Spodniak after it. Swift was able to get around him. Sends it along the wall in front. Spodniak lurking. Hoping for a turnover, but Hobart able to get it out. And now they work it up ice in this 2-2 game. That's Crane with the rush up ice. Comes to the near corner. And back for Hobart is Bulger. Sends it off the wall. Taken away. Adrian in the attacking zone. In front. It comes. Shot. One-timer. That was Hines. Now Beaver goes down to the crease. Shot from the side. Whistles. No goal. And he's got to cover it up, but boy, did Heinz have some room to shoot. About half the goal as he's on that right wing side. They caught the Statesman in a bit of a line change there, and that's what set the odd man rush up. And you watch the uh, fruits of those labors here in the offensive zone, and you watch Heinz right there. Yeah, there was some room a little bit there as the puck then popped out, covered up by Beaver as he just kind of reached out for playing the shell game and held on. Who's going to be the hero here? Will be late? Well, we need an extra, some extra time. All right, Patosha on the faceoff for Adrian. Goes behind the goal. That's Wooth. Wooth takes a bump from Patosha. Play at the blue line. Calgin forward checking. Sends it down for Patosha at the end boards. He takes a push. Play at the near wall. Hobart able to clear. They work it up ice. Now Adrian will send it cross ice, and they're able to work it to the neutral zone. 2-2 game. In front, May, he's taken off the play. Back comes Hobart. It's 2-2. That's Aquero sending it in front for Daniels. And the net comes out. There's pushing. There's shoving. There's a whistle. We have 151 to go. This is a national championship game tied, and we're end-to-end -end right now. Uh, it's been fun. You get the feeling right now, though, that uh, Hobart's got their finger in the dam a little bit because Adrian scored that goal. They've had the pressure ever since. The Statesman had a couple of quick opportunities back down in their offensive zone, but it's been Adrian who's been pressing the issue, trying to find the go-ahead goal that you'd think would stand up as the game winner if it scored right now. And put toward the front of the nets. Chase Spencer there, shoving with Tanner Daniels. Spencer wants a call, but nothing coming. Now watch for Maurer at the right point. He had the game winner against Endicott from the left half wall on a power play. He gets it here, sends it to the corner. Adrian back defensively. They can't clear. Swift sends it down, sent wide. Now Adrian countering. 2-2, third period. Spodniak after it. Spodniak. The puck uh, went out. 
or uh, rather Beaver with the save off the shot from the near wall. Well, if you're Spodniak right now, you're feeling it. You just had that goal. You've scored 30 goals this season. You're going to take every opportunity you can. Try to notch 31. Put it on goal. And Beaver made that save. And that shot came from the near wall. What tremendous energy we have in the building right now. Summers on the faceoff, Adrian. Summers had the big pass to set up the tying goal the other day, along with a goal that he scored earlier. Summers after it behind the goal. Now, uh, the referees uh, raising their hand, the referee. That came off. That came off. That's happened a few times today. It has. 124 remaining in regulation. So we had an overtime game in our first national semifinal game with Adrian and UNE, a much different game. That was 8-7 <laughs> final. 2-2 two -two here. Here comes the faceoff in the Hobart zone, loose in the circle. Summers there, Aquero emerging. Here comes Aquero with Alexander on the left, goes to the right, sent to the side. Taurico has had a really good game and goal for Adrian. Kept in Alexander nope. offside. Just barely came over that blue line, but that was close. Joan Alexander would have had a runway to the net if he could have held that in the offensive zone. It just popped across the line. And there is Mr. Taurico. Boy, what pressure these goalies have to be under right now. They both know this is akin to overtime. For all intents and purposes, this is the extra frame. Next goal wins, no doubt about it. I pat myself on the back a little bit here, Steve. I said 3-2 would be the final score. I didn't say who was going to win. I had no idea. I said this is a 3-2 game written all over it, and that looks like that's what we're going to have. All right, Heinz after it in the corner. Under a minute to go in regulation. Adrian looking for the go-ahead goal, trying to defend their national title. Hobart looking for its first title. Great storylines in this game. Certainly. Now it is Tyson working forward. Adrian gets back. They can't keep it in. Finally, Hobart does keep it in, and the shot from the left point is stopped on the drive by Tanner Daniels. Yeah, Daniels with that opportunity. And again, Talarico knew he had to be alert and ready for it. As that puck, they'll use all the offensive zone here. Pass all the way across the ice. There's Talarico, made the save, no rebounds. Held on to it, good puck control. Very important right now as any opportunity could end this game. All right, face off in the Adrian zone. In the corner, it is Aquero taking a push. Adrian winds it around, 30 seconds remaining third period. Tie game in the national championship game in regulation. Adrian is able to clear. Lastman couldn't keep it in. Sends it ahead. Alexander cross ice. Adrian back defensively with Ryder. Ryder sends it all the way down. That could be an icing. It is with 6.4 to go. Time for a face-off win and a shot if you're Hobart. Yes, yeah, right now you want to have your best face-off man out there. And I know in the last game, that was Tristan Fasig who was the best. Right now, I think they're going to talk, talk this one over and call timeouts. 6.4 seconds to come down to a face-off win. Yeah, this is the biggest drop of the puck of the game, without a doubt. So taking a look at a couple numbers here, the shots on goal in the game uh, have been close throughout the game. But it was Spodniak tying the game uh, to make it 2-2. But 32 shots on goal, Adrian, 30 Hobart. 2-2 game. It's been an even game. Oh, it absolutely has overall. This is exactly what you expect in this game. Certainly what I expected. I kind of thought this game would have a tight contest all over. It was in doubt a little bit when three goals were scored in a five-minute span back in the first period to have Hobart up 2-1, but it stayed that way until the 14-30 mark when Spartaniak scored his 30th goal of the season to tie things up. That's where we stand right now. So will we have... a Quick goal here. Will we have a quick one in overtime? Are we going to play all night? I guess that's the intrigue we're staring at right now. But Sp it's been a classic, exactly what you want in a game like this. Spodnak's goal came at 14:30. A great feed from Matthew Redding to set up that tying goal. Luciani also got an assist on that goal. And those two both have two assists on the night. They set up the end's goal as well. Big faceoff upcoming. 6.4 to go. All right, so you got Alexander out there against Luciani. We're staring at an overtime, but still not over. 
goes to the end boards, comes to the near side, two seconds remaining, and we are heading for overtime, second straight overtime for Adrian in the final four teams. They had to win against Wisconsin Stevens Point to win in overtime. Adrian used to overtimes. Hobart had a 2-0 lead. Adrian coming back with Spodniak tying the game in the third period. Mark Taylor talks a lot about keeping emotions in check and not allowing uh, adversity to be an issue. I, I imagine some of that will be discussed in the Hobart locker room in between periods. Yeah, Hobart hasn't played overtime in a while. They're 3-0 and on the season. Last time they played uh, overtime was on New Year's Eve. Shane Shell scoring an overtime goal to beat Salve Regina. That's the last time they played. And, of course, Adrian with six overtime uh, vict- uh, six overtime games on the season, 4-0-2. And, and they won 8-7 against UNE on Friday. So I'm not sure that means anything overall in a game like this, that Adrian's played more overtime in the postseason. They have. Not sure if it's going to factor in the game or not, but it sets up a very interesting, I was going to say, next 20 minutes, but who knows? It might be even more than that. Hobart scored two goals within three minutes and 59 seconds in the first period. And they led 2-0. But then Ty ends his power play goal, made it 2-1. That lasted all the way to the third period when Spodniak's goal tied the game. I'm Steve Vecchione with Rob Kennedy. It is 2-2, Hobart and Adrian. We'll take a break. We're back for overtime. This is a national championship game. You're watching the 2023 NCAA Division III Men's Ice Hockey Championship from Endicott. We will see you in about 10 minutes. I'm Steve Vecchioni with Rob Kennedy. Welcome back to Endicott. College, Beverly, Massachusetts. We're heading for overtime. Adrian and Hobart in the D3 Men's Ice Hockey Championship. Adrian was trailing Rob 2-1 to one, late third period. Earlier in the week, Friday, when they played the University of New England, they were down 5-2. And Coach Krug told me this morning, maybe it wasn't meant to be. We were thinking it. I was thinking maybe during that that time of the game but they got their confidence they came back and ultimately they won a great game against UNE trailing 2-1 late take a look at the tying goal yeah you wondered what was going to come and you wondered how Spodniak could get on track because again he's been so snake pick here in the postseason but this pass from Redding and Spodniak was covered really well Brendan Howell was right there with him but watch this pass from Redding the quick flip and Spodniak found some way to untangle himself up from Howell and score the tying goal. That's just a goal scorer's goal, and it takes a special one to beat Damon Beaver. That was a special goal to tie things up 2-2. You saw Brendan Howell in front there for Hobart, uh, not able to stop Spodniak, but Hobart defensively has matched the block total that Adrian had in their victory over Geneseo in the championship game last year. 25 blocks for Hobart to nine for Adrian. The goal scoring early, Shell off the shot from Aquero with the net coming out. It was a Shell getting credit for the goal at 724. Then Aquero scoring 359 later to make it 2 nothing Hobart. Tie ends in the first period, had a power play goal. Uh, about 50 or 56 seconds after the Aquero goal. So it was 2-1 to one after one, and we went all the way to the 14-30 mark of the third period before Spodniak scored. The goalies have been a huge story. Taurico 28 saves, Beaver 30 for Hobart. We're 2-2, and we're 2 minutes and 15 seconds from starting the overtime. Not surprising we're going to overtime either. It's the third time in the last four to visit three finals games. We've gone to overtime. St. Norbert won in 2018 in OT. They knocked off Salve Regina 3-2. That was in double overtime. Stevens Point capped off their undefeated season in 2019. They knocked off Norwich 3-2. That was in overtime. They're at home. That crowd must have gone berserk when that goal was scored. Last year, no overtime with a 5-2 Adrian win. This year, if the Bulldogs are going to repeat... They need the next goal here in the extra frame, or frames as the case may be. I guess we're about to find out. That game with Salve Regina was a classic. 
But uh, Hobart's journey to the this game, they were 0 for 3 in the national semifinals before getting to this game, losing to St. Norbert in 2006, 5-4 in overtime, losing in the semis to Newman, the eventual national champs, 2-0, losing to Wisconsin Stevens Point in the semis in 2019. So this is their first ever championship trip, and I guess they're going to extend the trip uh, with an overtime game. Four overtime goals on the season for Adrian. Spartaniak has three of them. Of course, Luciani had the other one in that 8-7 victory over UNE on Friday night. For Hobart, three overtime win. Shane Shell has one of those goals. Jonah Alexander with an overtime winner to beat Trinity. And Luca Cuero, an overtime marker. He knocked off Buffalo State. And don't forget the uh, the win that got them here in the quarters was an overtime victory over Steven, Wisconsin Stevens Point on Spodniak's goal uh, after Luciani had two goals earlier in the game. It was Luciani with the overtime goal against UNE uh, as the, they were on a uh, power play with the major called against UNE. And right now it's going to be fascinating to see what decides this particular game. Let's think about one thing that we were talking about before the break overall as far as playing overtime recently or not recently. And one thing I did kind of come to think about was thinking back to uh, the professional hockey team I follow, the Montreal Canadiens, 1993. They won 10 straight overtime games in the way to a Stanley Cup. And Eric Desjardins, the defenseman on that team, said, we just knew we were going to win playing in overtime. And that might be the thing that Adrian is thinking about right now. They played those two overtime games in the tournament. Maybe it will give them a bit of an edge mentally because they're used to it. They're confident. They believe. But again, this Hobart team is not shy on confidence either, despite not having played an overtime game since New Year's Eve. All right. Hobart going left to right in the white uniforms, swayed against Boo Zavera of Hobart, and Boo Zavera controlling. Swift sends it to the neutral zone. Adrian going from right to left. We're in overtime. That's Heinz, right wing, pushes it forward. Swift back for for Hobart. Kept in, ends, shot to the side, comes to the near side. Shields keeps it in, works it along the wall. They cycle it. Far side, Adrian in the attacking zone. Swade is behind the goal. Now Hobart emerging with it. They get it out to the neutral zone. Intercepted Adrian. Poked away by Tyson of Hobart. Now it's... Swade shooting, steered away by Beaver. Adrian in the attacking zone with ends. Back is Swift for Hobart. Sent out to the neutral zone. Adinier will push it forward. Back is Hobart. We've played about a minute of this overtime. Now it's sent out to the neutral zone, and the puck goes out. Adrian hoping for a bit of Michigan magic. The uh, flagship University of Michigan, they got an overtime win tonight after trailing 1-0 to Penn State. Came back, tied it late. One in overtime, Adrian from Adrian, Michigan, would love to have the same thing happen. A late tying goal followed by an overtime winner. Of course, that'll give them a national championship. The Mason Blue headed to the Frozen Four in Division One. This would be even bigger if it's the Bulldogs who score next. As far as Michigan overtime goals today are concerned. A lot of hockey excitement in Michigan for sure. No doubt. This is high drama here with Hobart looking for its first national title. Adrian looking to repeat. Play at the neutral zone with Spodniak in the slot. Spodniak looks for the backhand in front is Luciani. He sends it out to the corner. They work it at the blue line with Redding, who made that great pass to Spodniak earlier to tie the game. But now countering is Hobart. They send it up the left side. That's Jared Patterson behind the goal. Patterson taking off the play, but Hobart in the attacking zone. One-timer goes wide. Hobart looking for a national championship here. In the Adrian zone, they send it behind the goal, the great Aquero in the corner in front, shot! Oh! And it is a save by Tallarico. What a tremendous save that was as well as he took one away from a guy who's got an overtime winner already, Shane Shell. Tremendous save from Tallarico as we'll watch this again. There's the pass, Aquero to Shell, and yeah, that was labeled, and... Tallarico got there and snared it with a glove. 29th save of the game for Tallarico. An incredibly huge save. Yeah, massive. Face off to the right of Tallarico. Comes out to the circle. Keeping it in his howl. Sends it through. Hobart pressure. Buzavera sent it in front. Now Adrian on the counter in this overtime. That's Calgin 
pushing it forward to the corner. Kalajan has 11 goals. Beaver stopping on the short side the shot. I've seen as much from Kalajan tonight, but you're right. He does have 11 goals on the season, and a guy who's very dangerous with the puck on his stick, as you're seeing right here, and he would love to get the game-winning goal. He didn't get to play in the national semifinals or finals last year as he was out injured. Had a couple of goals against Hobart in the NCAA quarterfinals, though. So he scored against the Statesman team before. Summers on the faceoff for Adrian. They control it at the blue line. But Spencer is taking off the play. And Hobart able to gain possession. They move it forward into the neutral zone. Coming away, Hal. Hal works in front. Hal Rico save. Hal had the tying goal yesterday against Endicott when Hobart was down one nothing. Murphy flips it forward. Into the corner it goes for Summers. Summers lost it. Here comes Hobart, and they will push it down and change on the fly here. Now going back behind the goal for Hobart is Maurer, who had the game winner yesterday on the power play. Now it is Adrian up ice, and good play. Working hard for Hobart was Hartman, sent back behind the goal, Swift. Watched by ends. Swift gets around ends. Off to Wooth. Wooth sends it ahead. Goes behind to the corner for Ryder. Playing the circle. Watch those bouncing pucks. Both teams, you never know what those bouncing pucks are going to do in a game like this. Here comes Swade. Left side. Ends a shot. Save Beaver. He has a cannon, and he made the save Beaver on ends. He has a cannon. His slap shot's a little bit uh, more velocity than his wrist shot. Didn't have time to let that slapper go, but he's got a darn good wrist shot in his own right. But that time, a little bit of distance on that shot. No screen in front, and Beaver cutting down the angle. That's when he's going to save every time. Comes out to Shields off the faceoff. Luciani controlling. Luciani is perched in front. Redding is there. Luciani and Redding working. Play along the wall. Hobart looks to send it up ice, and they're able to work with Buzavera splitting the D now in front Buzavera saved by Redding close or, 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 correction by Talrico now up ice is Luciani Luciani sends it through now on the far side Hober countered back and forth we go and taken off the play was Tanner Daniels flying up the ice both teams along the right side here comes the half wall shot goes out that was Babiak who made the defensive play in the uh, zone, carried it all the way up ice, and we'll take a look at that Hobart chance again. Artem Buzavera, big size on this, and he's going to get the return pass here and just got a little deflection. I think Talarico made a touch on that to keep it wide while Buzavera bearing down on goal. All right, Swade on the faceoff. Seven goals, 11 assists on the season for Adrian. Goes behind the goal, Hobart with possession. They send it up to the neutral zone. Back comes Adrian with Heinz for checking. Countering Aquero up the left wing. Aquero looking. Aquero works magic with the, the stick handling, but this time Adrian able to get it out and stop Aquero. He's a big focus. Mauer will send it towards Talrico. He'll stop it at the side of the net. And a great play by Babiak as well defensively. That's the reason why Aquero really didn't get the opportunity he wanted. Two very solid defensive play by Cameron Babiak in overtime. One resulting in an offensive zone chance for the big defenseman. That one just a, a good snuff job to make sure that Aquero didn't get the opportunity he would have liked. Face off to the left of Talrico. It is Will Crane on the face off for the Statesman. Adrian possession out to the neutral zone. Countering is Fontana for Hobart. Taking off the play. And back. Patterson will chase it down for Hobart. Play at the neutral zone now with Ooh. interception. Adrian here. Spodniak offside. Yep, good thing too for Hobart because that giveaway in a bad spot led to a quick counter. Bodies collide behind the play. Spodniak in the middle of that. He's all right hopping up. A Hobart player was spilling down with him. Faceoff will be at neutral ice in front of the Hobart bench. Just about five minutes into overtime. Couple of good chances either way. It's been an incredibly close game. And the goalkeepers have really stood out. 
31 saves Tower Rico, 34 saves Beaver. 15-13 remaining, we're in the first overtime. 2-2 was the score after regulation. Well, I now, said this after the UNE game, that was a game was a shame anyone had to lose, this one doubly so. Hobart scored the first two goals. Adrian had a goal later in the first period on a power play. Spodniak tied the game at 14 in the 15th minute of the third period. And we were sent to overtime with neither team able to score after the Spodniak goal. Face off outside the blue line. Hobart 22-0 when leading after two periods. That's in jeopardy here in the final game of the season. Adrian with possession, steering it ahead, Murphy. Now it's Summers with Murphy, Summers behind the goal. In front, it comes to the half wall. Spencer pushes it down, Adrian for checking. Perriman's got no stick. And the shot towards Beaver, stop, goes high in the air. That was Murphy working, and uh, Beaver was looking for it. Well, they had to have that stoppage because that was a situation where the defenseman, Matthew Perrion, was just wandering around the zone trying to do his best without a stick out there. Number 19, you'll see him in the corner right now. And he's doing what he can without a stick. And thankfully for Hobart, that goes up and out of play and allows everyone to get properly equipped once again. Patosha on the faceoff, loose in the circle, comes to the half wall. Heinz backhands it behind the goal, ends, takes a check. Hobart looks to clear. And they're able to come up ice with Tyson, sending it up ice. That's Daniels working with Tyson, goes behind the goal. This is the Adrian zone. Hobart sends it towards Tower Rico, looking for it from the side. The shot blocked. Good block in front. And uh, that was uh, ends, I think. Yep, ends with the block. Now goes behind the goal. Hobart stays with it. They send it to the slot. Adrian with ends, clearing. Ends with a great play defensively on that block. I actually thought it was a defenseman there first who did that. And Terry Ryder, because I saw the nine out there, and Ryder's kind of a pro at blocking shots, but it was the uh, forward, Ty Ends, who made that play. And we usually think about him in the offensive zone, not as much as the defensive zone, but a great defensive play there. And a face -off he he does up. it all. He, he he's does. a tremendous player. All right, on the faceoff, Luciani. You got Spodniak out there. Luciani and Redding. Luciani at the side. Where's the puck? It's in the circle. Adrian Ford checking. We're in overtime. National championship. Shields, his shot blocked, deflected to the far side. We come to the neutral zone with Tyson. Tyson over the blue line. Backhands it to the corner. Now Spencer behind the goal. Spencer sends it off the boards. Adrian up ice. That's Spodniak. Right wing, left wing rather. Uh, right wing. And, uh, shot blocked. Now Spodniak working. Spodniak after it in the neutral zone. Taking away Luciani. Up the wing into the slot. Luciani hits the ice. Yeah, Alexander got the stick in on there and knocked him off the puck. Alexander sends it to Aquero. Taken off the play by Went. Yeah. This is uh, Hobart for check. They work it in the corner. Goes behind the goal for Alexander. Looks for the wrap in front. It comes with Shell there. Adrian looks to clear up the wall. They're able to send it all the way down. That may be icing. No, it's waved off. And they should have waved that off, too. That could have been played by Hobart. They stopped and tried to nurse that icing call. Didn't get it. Could be a big play. Murphy in the corner. Ryder looks for it at the point. If they can get it to him. Goes behind the goal, however. Now the wrap in front. Summers. Ryder now from the blue line, sends it down, play in the crease. And we have a stoppage. I think the net came out. I think Murphy's in the crease, actually. They're going to move this face off outside the defensive zone as a crease violation called on Adrian. That stops the play. And again, it was some uh, pandemonium going on inside the Hobart defensive zone. Well, watch it here. A play right behind the goal and pass out in front. Murphy will come in and, uh, late to that other side. And you watch him right now. Yeah, there he is right through the blue paint. And you see the referee pointing outside the zone. 12-21 left in the first overtime. Swayed on the faceoff for Adrian. Controlling. Now ends. Left wing. Shoots. 
Might have hit the shoulder of Beaver, it goes out. That rising wrist shot from Enns again. The slapper's got the velocity, but he can fire that wrister, and he was going upstairs on Beaver that time. And he'll get the faceoff remaining inside the Adrian offensive zone. Nail bite in time for both teams if it wasn't, well, throughout this game. It's been close through it in entirety. Swayed on the faceoff against Fontana in the Hobart zone. Goes behind the goal, comes up along the wall. Hobart attacking with Fontana. Back, Babyak for Adrian. Comes to ends at the half wall. Ends will push it forward into the neutral zone. Now Hobart able to work it to the Adrian zone. In the corner, Babyak defensively comes in front. Quick shot blocked. And again, that's ends with the block. Yeah, doing a great job <laughs> on both ends of the ice. Now Adrian able to push it forward where Swift will collect for Hobart. Uh -oh. He lost a part of his stick and went flying. So you've got Adrian forechecking with half a stick on the ice. Yeah, it was lucky. He broke his stick. It looked like a two-on-one, but that stick he broke sitting right down on the ice broke up the two-on-one. So the hockey gods give. The hockey gods take away. Spodniak skates over the stick, goes after it. Now along the wall, push forward Belov, taking away Luciani, takes a big check. Nicely done that time by Fassig, stopping Luciani. Now back is Wuth, Matthew Wuth, behind the goal with Luciani lurking. And off the wall, Hobart able to push it to the neutral zone. That's Lastman, lost the puck. Here comes Luciani shooting. Save Beaver. Spodniak follow comes loose. Here comes Hobart. No goal there. Daniels left wing. Daniels behind the goal. Looks to center. Now to the near side. Daniels sends it to the point. Down it goes. Blocked. Another one. All right, here come the Bulldogs. They are in the attacking zone. Luciani and Spodniak, so dangerous. Beaver with a big save. Well, Daniel's back at the other end, too. It took a, a block from Connor May to slow him down. All right, in front it comes. Goes out to the right point. Adrian will have to regroup with Potosha. Potosha will flip it down. Potosha after it with Lastman back. Winding it around Hobart. They're able to work it up ice. Here comes Aquero, left wing. In front it comes Shell. Save Tallarico! Oh. Biggest save of the game from Nick Tallarico. The senior is going to have a night to remember regardless, but he wants to remember this as a night where his team won their second straight championship. And that save on Shane Shell, who's a great goal scorer, tremendous offensive player, has an overtime goal already. That one looming large as we play on here in Beverly, Mass. Shell had the first goal of the game a long time ago. That goal for Shell came at uh, 7.24 off the play by Aquero. We have seen great end-to-end -end action in this overtime. We're seeing something here, too, that I like as well. We have a stoppage in play because the uh, got a nice maintenance crew out there taking the shovels and shoving off some of the snow along the uh, edge of the boards as well as in the uh, goal creases down on both ends as well. Of course, we played 70 minutes and 10 seconds of hockey on that in the night. That's why they're getting the uh, ice uh, maintenance out there. And we're continuing to play because of this save by Nick Tallarico. We haven't had a ton of 10-bell saves, but there's one right there as Shane Shell looked to end this game and give Hobart their first ever NCAA D3 championship. Not to be, not yet anyway. And we continue here at Endicott College. So again, Tallarico was replaced yesterday by Deshaun Stewart. And... Again, I, we told you this earlier, but Coach Krug wanted to go out of his way to say this morning it was not necessarily about how Tallarico was playing. It was just how the game was going. He wanted to change things up. He knew he was going to put him out there today. And Tallarico has been great. He has had a, a tremendous game with 32 saves, 36 now for Beaver. The goalies, if you really want to break this game down, have been Maybe the biggest story of the game. Well, I think so overall. I mean, you can look at a couple of different storylines. I mean, Luca Cuero's got a two-point night uh, with a goal and an assist. A couple assists for uh, Luciani. Matthew Redding with a couple helpers on the night, too. But I think you're right. The guys down at both ends of the ice, standing in the blue paint, 
They're the ones that, if we're going to have three stars, if we did have three stars, my three stars of the game, I can already tell you who they're going to be. Whoever scores the overtime goal, winning goaltender, losing goaltender, that's how it would go for me. They have been great, the two netminders tonight. And we saw ends with a couple blocks. Adrian now up to 13 blocks, 28 blocks in the game for, for Hobart. Faceoff will be in the Adrian zone. In the overtime, there is 9.50 remaining. It's swayed on the faceoff against Boo Zavera. Loose in the circle and ends back defensively. He has been on both ends of the ice doing great work. Now Swade, left wing. Swade sends it high. Beaver tried to glove it and went to the corner. Now comes up the wall, countering Hobart. They push it forward, Daniels. Now that is Patterson in the corner. Hobart at the end boards. Patterson tries to get it at the near boards. Finally, it is loose at the neutral zone with ends. Ends up the left wing. Ends working with Heinz. Heinz after it. Hobart able to send it up along the wall and back to the neutral zone. We're 2-2 with nine minutes to go in the overtime. Alexander in the Adrian zone takes a check. Adrian countering. Here's ends. He'll send it to the corner. Adrian with the four check. Player goes down. Another player goes down behind the goal. That was Spodniak going down for Adrian. Now kept in. But it, Hobart able to emerge. And they send it up behind Tauarico with Shields back defensively. Shields has the puck. Pressure Hobart on the four check. And working up Adrian into the neutral zone. Spodniak after it. Swift is back. Swift has it. Now Maurer. Maurer will look to clear. Sends it up ice. After it is Howell. But taken back by Summers of Adrian. 8-10 to go in the overtime. National championship game. Here comes uh, Went taking off the play. Now Hobart with the counter. And Fontana left wing shooting. Blocked. Adrian able to send it up ice. That is Went over the blue line. Went will pull up at the half wall. Went looks to center, goes behind the goal. Murphy in front. Player goes down. Big check applied against Went. Getting in front there was Crane. Now Patterson left wing for Hobart, working with Hal. Patterson in front goes wide. Back to the neutral zone. End to end we go. May will send it down to the corner. After it is Calgin, goes behind the goal. We come out to the neutral zone. That's Klein. Klein being four-checked. Klein sends it up. Hobart keeps it in. Goes to the wall. Hobart out to Lastman. Lastman sends it to the left side. In front it comes. Goes behind the goal. Fasig behind the goal. That's May in the corner. Sends it up the wall. Hobart will... Let it go all the way down because we're going to have icing. <laughs> That's what it takes to get a whistle here, an icing call, because there have been shouts from both benches for penalties to be called here. And I bet it was the first period. You might have seen the referee throw their arm up in the air. But right now it's going to take something that's an absolute no-doubter to get a whistle here in overtime against either of these two teams. 38 shots on goal, Adrian. 34 Hobart. It's a 2-2 game in overtime. Face-off will be in the Adrian zone. Buzavera will take the face-off for Hobart. Patosha on the face-off for Adrian. Key face-offs always in overtime. Comes out. Here's Swift. Lost the puck. Kaljan got in front of him. Here comes Patosha for Adrian. Poked away. Hobart the other direction. That's Daniels backhanding it to the Adrian zone. Play at the neutral zone. Calgen cross ice pass. Eluding Heinz. Goes behind the goal. That's Maurer. Maurer winds it around. Up to the point. Tyson is able to push it forward for Hobart. 6.30 remaining in overtime. It goes behind the goal. I think we have another icing. Now we do. Or it's out of play. One or the other. Yeah, they bring it all the way back down to the defensive zone. So... Icing the call here. Another huge offensive zone faceoff for the Hobart College Statesman. 
And again, icing, you know, you have a funny way sometimes in tight spots. They can bite you. You can win that face off. Yeah, they can bite you. We'll see if here if the Bulldogs can win this and ward off some danger. Aquero on the face off for Hobart. Swade is the other face off man. All right, comes out to Wooth. He will send it around. In front it comes with Aquero lurking. Comes out to the point. Sent down by Patterson. Blocked. Getting in front, Swade. Now Heinz can't get to the puck. Back to the neutral zone we go. Aquero after it. Push back. Swade sends it to ends. Ends at the blue line. Ends sends it to the wing. Shot. Block. Goes behind the goal. Loose at the side. Stopped by Hobart. They're able to clear for a moment. But now it's kept in by Adrian. Goes out to the point and cleared back to the Adrian zone. After it, Aquero. Shields back for Adrian. 540 left in the overtime. Great play by Wooth defensively to make that clear. One-handed, too, and he did it without icing the puck. Goes to the corner in the Hobart zone. Spodniak after it, but Ryder back for Adrian. And working in Hobart, and the net comes out and going down hard on the uh, the rush-up ice. Uh, Statesman, and I believe that's Howell. It is Howell. He was trying to do what he... Usually does that we've seen here in uh, Endicott or at Beverly Mass, and that's kind of a patented blue-collar lunch pail type uh, attack by Brendan Howell. That's what got him his goal that uh, turned out to be a very important goal, tied the game up against the uh, Endicott Gulls, and trying to win it here in overtime, too, just using his muscle, his size, and his strength to set up a scoring opportunity. All right, Fontana on the faceoff for Holbart against Luciani. Key face-offs. This is the Adrian zone. Comes out to Lastman. Lastman sends it down. Through the crease it goes. Hobart pressure. Now after it, you got Crane. Comes up along the wall. Crane sends it to the corner. That's Howell working. Howell gets it back. Sends it down from the side. Score! Hobart wins the national championship. And that is Crane with the game winner. Will Crane, not the one you would pick, I don't think, because you look at the offensive totals, four goals on the season, but number five will live on forever in the minds of the Hobart Statesman Hockey Program, all its alumni, and every one of the Hobart fans, their first ever national championship. Will Crane's fifth goal of his season he's from littleton colorado you see the celebration the adrian bench is stunned and uh luciani and you go to hobart the other the other side of the spectrum in this situation the first national championship for mark taylor and it is a 378 win total for him he is now a champion, a great coach, a great guy when you talk to him, and he is now a national champ. He said he was going to do it for the alums if they could do it, and there are a lot of statesmen and alums right now who are jumping up and down. We'll see the goal again here, too. Number 10, out there, Will Crane, spooning it home to win things, and Coach Taylor's a Hall of Famer no matter what. He was going to be a Hall of Fame coach regardless, but this just caps thing off to get his first ever national championship. And Will Crane played his junior hockey not all that far from here, Manchester, New Hampshire, part of the New Hampshire Monarchs program, back one state off to the south, and the goal he'll remember for the rest of his life, as will all of his teammates and everybody who's associated with this Hobart program. That was a great shot by Crane. He was uh, not at a great angle there necessarily, but it was a, a terrific play. And uh, give so much credit to to these teams. I mean, they were battling in this overtime end to end. Adrian is stunned. Adrian going for a uh, second consecutive championship, and they were able to force the overtime with the Spodniak goal. But at the end of the day, Hobart, with a great defensive team and a great defensive effort, with all those blocks, we've been detailing uh, the amount of blocks they've had in the game, but it's Will Crane with the game winner in terms of uh, i was mentioning blocks 29 blocks today on that adrian offense we told you that coach taylor uh, his point earlier today as uh, we see 
That's an ecstatic Brendan Howell. Brendan Howell, he said, don't give Adrian space. Play him tight, and they did that today. Well, you look at this Hobart team as well. you got to feel good for the Statesman because they've uh, been bridesmaids on three occasions. Not even the maid of honor. They were bridesmaids. Three times in the semifinals. Had to win to get here to beat Endicott for the first time while wedding bells ringing. They're the brides here in Beverly, Massachusetts with their first ever title, and look how happy they are. We heard some Billy Joel songs earlier, and the lyrics that come to mind right now really sum up both these teams. It's either sadness or euphoria. While well, you're looking at sadness right now, they know what it's like to be on the other side of that celebration. But there's the euphoria of the guys out there in white and orange. And right now it's Queen playing as uh, per tradition. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but Hobart and Mark Taylor getting his first national championship. <laughs> Uh, what a what a moment in Geneva, New York. They can barely believe it. Look at the looks of the face of these players. That's Khalil Fontana. What a dynamic game tonight. He's in tears. The best kind of tears, championship tears. And it's time to shake hands. You know how much respect these programs have to have for each other. They've gone through an absolute classic, and everyone out there knows it. You see Mark Taylor. Again, he says, say nothing when you lose. Say less when you win. I bet he has something to say today. He might make an exception to the presser <laughs> tonight, yes. But he's a you know an understated kind of guy. He he keeps his team on an even keel. But uh, well, let's give so much uh, credit to Adrian and what they've been able to do over the last oh forever. I mean they they've been really good. Uh, first under Coach Fogarty and Adam uh, Krug, his former player, has kept it going. A disappointing result today. They wanted that back to back. They wanted to taste it again. But it's Hobart and the winning goal by Will Crane in the overtime giving Hobart the national championship. Rob, one final comment. Yeah, a goal bigger than the Rocky Mountains. He's from Colorado, and it's a massive goal overall. Adrian, you mentioned that legacy, playing in uh, eight out of the last nine NCAA tournaments, defending champs, got an overtime goal away from repeating. But it's Hobart's night tonight, and, well, you got to feel happy for the statesman and all of their fans, all of their alums, all of their players for what they've accomplished. Beverly Mass will have a special place in their hearts from now until the end of time. All right, so we're going to sign off, but stick around. We're going to show you the trophy presentation, so please do not go. There's plenty of video for you to see, and we want you to enjoy uh, the ceremony. Uh, obviously, if you're an Adrian fan, a disappointing result, but a great moment for the fans of Hobart as uh, – Smiles everywhere and hugs and, and all that good stuff if you're Hobart. They've won their first national championship, and we're going to let you enjoy the trophy presentation here at Endicott College. I want to thank everybody at Endicott uh, for all they've done uh, for this tournament. Yeah, they were great hosts. And I want to also thank David Harris and our crew. Great job, terrific job with all the pictures here at Endicott College. Hobart is the national champs. They beat Adrian 3-2. to two. I'm Steve Vecchione. For Rob Kennedy, you've been watching the 2023 NCAA Division III Men's Ice Hockey Championship from Beverly, Massachusetts, the Raymond J. Bork Arena. We're going to sign off with trophies upcoming here from Endicott College.
27, the junior, Jay Fewa. And number 49, the senior, the tie ends. Now, congratulations to the 2022-2023 